Welcome once again to another episode of Legend of the Drowned Isles, the world of Omatia. A homebrew D&D, I guess I can call it homebrew, the world's mine anyway. Uh, the rules are mostly not mine, although occasionally there is a rule creep of things that I'd like to have happen in the universe. Uh, and things we find that we need to get covered. And of course, since I've also made up all the gods, all that stuff is new. Okay, fine. I'm maybe making a few more things than I should. Um, I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, the GM and uh, host and uh, chief insane asylum victim uh, of this game. Uh, going around the table, though, we do have our regular players. Um, I'm Marie. I play Ozara, the Wood Elf Druid. And yeah. <laughs> I'm not lonely this week. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> They're full house this week. I've returned. My name is Jody. I play Clark, the half orc bar uh, fighter rogue. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> is he getting a little barbarian now? He may be someday soon. Uh, <laughs> but he's Great. he and I are eager to see what's coming next. Cool. And I'm Pat, playing Emrun Elisar, everybody's favorite friendly cleric person. <laughs> Hey, I'm Nax. I'm playing Zakis, a half-elf wizard who recently discovered how squishy he is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Recently? <laughs> well, more, oh. more, more so than usual. Uh, he hasn't been in a combat for a little yeah. while. He usually doesn't take one turn to like the other ten percent. That's true. That's true. Well, you faced up against some mages in the previous session. Uh, it was the. Uh, oh, I should probably have found this session name. I actually do have it here somewhere. But it was a gate that was discovered. I'll back myself up a little bit here. Um, the episode was called Passing the Gate. And you found yourself, yourselves in need of rescuing Salazar, who had foreseen the events leading up to his death. Captured by cultists to be used in the ritual opening of a Poluxian gate to another plane, the group discovered an old nemesis at the center of the plot, a cultist ma a mage named Ellis, who attempted to rob them of several old relics over a year ago. The group managed to thwart the summoners, but only after they had brought through some sort of beholder, and when that retreated, a gigantic ten uh, tentacled creature tried to pull itself through the portal. In the end, the portal was destroyed, and Salazar's body was recovered, already dead, but Amrun set to reviving the dead diviner as his ghost watched on. So you were able, successfully, to revive Salazar, leaving him in a strange state. His speech seemed more coherent than most of what you'd seen him before, but he seemed to be happy, if you can call it that, a little bit confused, and desiring to go somewhere else. In fact, he'd like to accompany you back to the city of Atur, if that's possible. Yeah? Well, yes. Sure. So you return he back to have to ride on someone else's horse. You can ride on, mm. on mine. I can keep up. Okay. <laughs> Not riding on my pony. <laughs> so are you becoming a, an ostrich for the, the run back? or? I mean, I have a walk speed of 45. Oh, right, right. That's right. You can kind of keep up to the horses, which is a little disturbing. <laughs> um, or your horse is big enough. It could fit the two. Probably. You're not Probably. huge. She is large, too, so... Well, as you, you make your way back to Vitor, uh, passing through Waterstone, because the, the road travels right through Waterstone, Salazar seems to take no notice of the town whatsoever, kind of looking forward always to the further on down the road where Vitor sits. Doesn't seem to even request to stop in, which seems a little bit strange, given that his grandson is still here. Does he know all his stuff is missing? Uh, as you chat along the way, he says, no, my, my stuff isn't missing. Mm -hmm. My stuff was given away. To who? Oh, a variety of people. Everyone but us. There were people along the way who I've asked favors of from time to time, and who had shown some promise from here and there, and I foresaw that they would probably have a better time with that equipment than I. After all, I was to be dead. So, uh, is any of that going to be waiting for me at the library when we arrive at Inventory, well, <laughs> I hadn't foreseen that you would be there for a little while. It was a bit confusing. As I said, I could not see anything beyond my own death. Some things are placed in trust with others that will hopefully pass your way in time, but 
uh, you as a group had not really expressed a lot of interest in many of my things. In fact, uh, if I may say, you seem to be somewhat distrustful of my creations and, and machinations. And I can understand why it's difficult. Uh, only for the first time in my entire life am I experiencing one moment following the other. Uh, most of my life has been to others, strange and confusing, to myself, natural, but still a gap of, of understanding I found difficult to breach. I'm willing to try any of your stuff. Aha. Same, provided that it won't kill me. <laughs> well, I, I'm sorry that I cannot guarantee oh. such things. As power is needed, uh, then more, uh, more things are required in Whoops. danger. <laughs> uh, you had one job. No, um, <laughs> you didn't ask him. That's true. I didn't go through the regular routine. Um, but as you travel along, he explains that a large number of his alchemical supplies and some of his recipe books were farmed out to a couple of, uh, of people in, uh, in Aquain um, via Liari. Um, Liari is one of the people that actually trained under Salazar and they trained work together. And so Liari, the, the majority of that wagon load was actually headed down to Wallstone. And then the rest was going to be going on to Aquain after that. Um, he didn't have a lot. He just described that most of what he had was ephemeral by design. Um, most of it was to be used and then uh, discarded or used and it would itself be uh, finished. Uh, potions in particular were only one use. Um, a lot of it was experimental and that meant that there were side effects. So he did trust Liari to be cautious with it to a certain degree. Um, and the uh, alchemists in Aquain, he trusted to learn their lessons the hard way, uh, essentially. <laughs> but he had correspondence with some of them over the over the years. Um, and you know that when you went down to Aquain, he'd sent you with a shopping list. He'd done that several times yeah. uh, over the years. Yeah. Um, but it's strange to hear Salazar speaking plainly and coherently, but also somewhat drained. Um, the vigor that he often ex displayed, the amusement that he often displayed, that seems to have been drained somewhat. Um, uh, he's still uh, as blind as ever, but seems to be having difficulty with it now. Uh, no longer able to really walk confidently along, but instead, even when you mill about and have a rest with the horses, um, you find him kind of walking around with one hand on the horse to kind of keep himself oriented. Um, as though he's lost something. Are you going to be all right? I don't know. For the first time in my life, I do not know what the future lies. And I'm pretty sure that I only remember the past. I'm pretty sure that animal Dragon should be hunted down head. and killed. <laughs> Strange <laughs> insects we have these days. Large and noisy. Dragons, I swear. But... Well, your sight, whatever sight this was, will it return in time, do you think? I don't know. I've lived my life in a form of certainty. In possible outcomes, sure, not everything was laid before me, and not everything was crystal clear or in order, or even all at once. I once wrote a journal entry that took me 20 years. I only wrote it one word at a time, and they weren't even in order. I didn't know what the end was until the last word was placed, the third word of all. But that word was death. That was the only certainty that I had left with me. Now I, I honestly don't know. I was hoping in Vatur to speak to Mirzana Fahana of the Temple of Namazani. I've always found that while she may have found my descriptions um, frustrating, I was able to at least impart to her some sense of what I meant, and I have always been impressed by her calm and um, outwardly stoic demeanor. And um, I understand that Imrol has also returned. Yes. He would be another one I would hope to speak to again, that I had not expected to. I find myself looking forward to things that are unexpected, and I don't know what that means. It's frightening and exciting and... And frankly, I, I'm not sure what's in hold for me. Well, it should be possible to arrange a meeting with him. Welcome to living with the rest of us. Uh, indeed, I, I hope that a meeting can be arranged. 
And indeed, I, I suppose this is the way that people normally experience life. Will is a recovering from something. Uh, his return cost Having him much. Having his arm torn off. Yes. His return cost him much. Do you know where he was? Uh, no, no, that was not a vision received to me. All I knew was of his return and, and the impact it has had, although I assume further impact and I cannot see those things. But uh, I do thank you for the rescue. I had expected you to succeed, but beyond my death, I had not expected to return. It has thrown me for some of a loop. Well, welcome back. Indeed. Um, Amrun, are you here? Yes. Ah, uh, there is only a few things about you and your history that I that I remember. And he is kind of talking in the wrong direction and um, facing away. Most of what was given to me were visions, not all of which were of my own history or my own future. Yours in particular was a communication with things far beyond my humble mortal scope. Uh, I mean, I've, I suppose I've lived beyond the mortal scope a few times over now. I think a lot of times over, uh, probably. I don't remember what year it is, but I think I'm approaching 200 and something at this point. Uh, or 300 and something. I honestly didn't bother keeping track of the numbers. It was just sort of the thing I knew. More of those blasted insects. <laughs> um, but I, I, I knew that you were destined for something great. And that I, being the bearer of your key, was to at least take some small part in that, that pathway. Um, great being a word reserved for things that are good, but also things which are devastating. And I do not know the future which lies in front of you. I know that there are changes afoot in the world and powers that are resurging, uh, as both for good and for evil uh, in those cases. But I hope, and from what I've seen, you will be able to meet these powers uh, one by one and uh, find the balance which you seek in your own life. I hope. That would be keen. Mm -hmm. and I, uh, as, for, as for you, uh, Elzera, your father is a genuine friend to many, including myself. Um, I should like to see uh, to speak to him again, uh, perhaps. But I am not sure if I'll be venturing far from Batur. I feel the age is catching up to me somewhat more. So if you are to see your father sometime uh, relatively soon, uh, please uh, direct him to travel to Batur to see me, uh, if you can. Did, um, did he come see you before you, you passed? No, no. Um, his own illness in the winter had kept him from traveling far, and uh, I had been sending messages to him, uh, not indicating exactly what I had suspected, or rather what I knew of my own death. Uh, so perhaps some of the notes that I sent along with the carrier to his home will be um, somewhat misinterpreted. I, I apologize for any concern he might have uh, towards those messages. Well, he was, he was very concerned when I told him that your apartment was clean. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> That's where we yes, all. It was, it was um, well, I've always believed in the following the pattern of life, and, and uh, while I am both subject to the whims of the world and uh, foreseeing the influence I can have upon those, those, uh, those uh, influences and whims, um, I, I believed in the circle of existence, and when I believed my circle to be complete, I felt it best to uh, leave uh, as little behind uh, as might be uh, needed, but not so much as to burden anyone, including my grandson. I had felt that if he was forced to clean up after me, it would be somewhat disastrous for him. Uh, that I did not foresee, but I believed it. Nonetheless, and besides, there was a sense of having returned the place to where it was in the beginning when I first moved in there 
so many years ago. But there's no need to be concerned. One way or the other, that circle has completed, and I find myself in a new one. Mm. That's one way of seeing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is all the way I have to see it now, you might say. The circles have been completed, the cycles have been finished, and we move on from here. Mm. Where do you plan to stay in the future? The Temple of Nozity, uh, or are you uh, going to be able to live on your own? I do not know. That's a great many things I do not know. I will seek out some solace with Fahana at the at the temple. I don't think I will stay there for too long. I would not want to wear out my welcome. And without the guidance of one of the priests of Nemozani, I, I don't know if I would be able to find my way around inside the temple as a a delight when I did not need to see it, but now I will need to, and I cannot. So I doubt I will stay there. For now, I may call the tour home. I, I don't know if there's much call for an old fart who remembers far more than he knows, and knows far less than most people soon. <laughs> right. so that knowledge is always valuable. Uh, indeed. Well, perhaps my knowledge can help others. Mm. And while in Batur, feel free to ask for help. Feel free to ask us for help if you need any help at any point. Ah, well, that's very you, generous of you. Do you know how to summon familiars? <laughs> I'm, if you need one to be your eyes, it will be a good. It is an intriguing idea. Magics I never looked into and that I never thought I would need. I'll tap my pocket. To be this, honest, I. This is Prina. Hello, Prina? <laughs> Snore. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll just like introduce Prina to him, and it's like, this is what you can do. I can help you learn this if you want. You know? And he's kind of like trying to follow her sound as she's flying mm-hmm. around his head, kind of examining from all angles, and he kind of reaches out <laughs> gently, kind of trying again to follow. She alights on, on his hand very gently. Oh, oh, this is intriguing. Hello, little Prina. And she responds to him. Hello, you're old. Um, this yes. is Fred Salazar. I've mentioned him a few times. Oh, he's the crazy one, right? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> well, we shall see how crazy I am. But uh, you seem delightful. And she kind of squeals and and flies forward rapidly with he's got no time to react whatsoever. Kind of grapples around his nose uh, as a hug. This is kind of strange. She does that. Um, <laughs> And she backs away and kind of recoils. Uh, he doesn't seem to notice, but you notice her, her expression on her face is a little bit shocked as she kind of looks at you and kind of flies. Nice uh, nice meeting you, Mr. Salazar, sir. I'll give Prina a look. It's like, can we talk about this later? <laughs> she definitely doesn't seem to want to talk about it right now. Okay. Um, well, I, I'm afraid I don't have the skill for uh, bringing such a helpful creature, but I, I, I will think about such things. Yeah. I, I fear... I feel my days of, of, of magic might be behind me. Mm, yes. That would be well, terrible. Well, life is full of change. I suppose inevitably I was going to change too. Mm. Yes. The ride is easy. It does take a, basically a full day to get back. Uh, do you mind opening the window? Do you want it open? Okay. Yeah. I didn't know. Just so we get maybe a breeze or something. I actually closed it because there was a bit of noise coming from the <laughs> curtain and there was noise from that side. But if that makes it better, that's fine. I mean, and cute cars driving by. <laughs> Warm and humid. Okay. Um, I do fall back a little bit because mm-hmm. he's on my horse and I want to talk out of... Your shot? Out, out of your shot a bit quietly. Okay. You want to talk to... Salazar. Salazar? Okay. He's contentedly riding along. Yep. Um, you see him kind of reacting every time a bird flies by or you hear the sound of the wind in the trees and you get this sort of feeling that in a way he's never heard these things before um, that there's something very different for him right now last time we talked you said something about my fiance yes, yes. terrible thing that was I remember seeing it before it happened. 
nothing I could do. I didn't know who he was at the time. You said something about having a key to give him. Hmm, yes. Uh, yes, I remember something vaguely about that. Uh, if you'll excuse me, some of the memories are still somewhat jumbled, but... Yes. You miss him, do you? A lot. Uh, have you met him again, then? I've heard him. Mm. Have you? Mm. I think. Death is a strange thing. I've not experienced before, so it's still new to me. And I could not see what happens in the future. But your your lives are still intertwined, somehow. I could see that. And there would be something more, alas, Beyond my normal life, I suppose, there might be something to happen. I, I can't tell you that. I don't know. What I could see was the, the past. Yes. Yes. I see a bit of it now. I remember. When did he die, exactly? I give the date. Okay. And how I many how many years ago was that? Uh, that would have been. Have the exact date. Uh, the twenty seventh of Axum, forty one oh three. Okay. So thirteen years 13 ago. Thirteen years ago. Yes. Have you spoken to your mother about this? Not since hearing his voice again. I think that you might want to. I see her, saw her. Yes, definitely. Saw her. It happened a while ago. And she seems to be arguing. I cannot hear the words. Arguing with a, a small gnome. I've not met her before. She seems more aged than I do. <laughs> that's, that's something. I, I give a brief description of uh, Philia the Many. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. The small cane somewhat stooped over. Yes, yes, I think that's her. They're arguing about something. The words are lost yeah, to me. They often are. Why should this memory come up when you ask about your husband? Uh, fiance, sorry. They may have been arguing about this then. I wonder. There were many visions I never really put together. Uh, things that I saw that I simply felt either didn't contribute to the to the cycles I was part of. Many of those memories are fading from me now. I can feel it, but. She made a decision. Yes, as I can see it, a decision. It's on her face, as clear as, as clear as, um, I don't know, I, I suppose, as clear as the sky is. And I gesture toward the sky. It's a full, thick, cloudy day. <laughs> it works. Um, yes. Um, I, I suppose you'll have to speak to her find the key, I suppose, if, if that's what it is. Had you given him the key? Or do you still have the key to give him? No, I, I have no possessions any longer. So if there was anything that I had which would have been a key, it would have been already given away. I don't know what the key is or, or represents. You might ask your father to look through the things that I sent to him. Uh, perhaps there is something there that I, uh, I overlooked. Yes. Yes. Between your parents, they know something. Yes. I can see his face now. He was only a boy. He was. 
I'm sorry. At the time when I saw his face first, I didn't know who he was. Later on, some things had shown me your face and your parents and others. I did not live long enough to put that particular puzzle together. But the pieces are still scattered in my mind. If I think of more, I will ask of, of Fazana uh, some of the techniques that they have. The Nabozani are adept at memory, among other things, time. And perhaps they can help me repair some of my, my broken and fading memories. If you figure out more, please do let me know. I will attempt to. You know, it's times like these that I really miss a little bit of the lemongrass and mushroom stew that I made. I haven't seen anything with these eyes of mine since I was a mere boy. I think I was three. But every time I had that stew, I could see all kinds of colors. And my body would float adrift bereft of this fleshy form. Mushrooms, too. Yeah. My son had it once. I don't think he's forgiven me for that <laughs> lunch, to be honest. Oh, he's dead. I guess he never will forgive me everything. I should seek my grandson out, I suppose. I think you should. I think I might have worried him when I when we were on our way. And you. To be honest, I'm not sure if it is better that I was dead for him. He could move on, no longer with the burden of my my care on his mind. He could marry that young woman. Um, I believe it was a seamstress. That would be that would be nice. I have her name somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Are we already past through that water zone? Yeah, okay. yeah, it's starting that last stretch towards, towards the tour. Um, so are they out of earshot, her and Salazar? You can move, they, they pull back a little bit. Okay. You can see that they're talking. I'm just kind of like pulling forward, okay. and also out of earshot of everybody else. Okay. Oh, you kind of feel the tug on your ear as Prin is kind of pulling yeah. you to Hell move yeah. a little bit further. Hey, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'll go appropriately far away. Okay. So uh, what was that about? You see people, you know, the, the, <coughs> in the center, I'm ruined, you're seeing that the horse is kind of, you're not sure, you haven't had a chance to bathe for a couple of days? Because <laughs> I guess it's just eager um, to get back to the, li to the library. <laughs> so he feels really strange. Strange in what way? Dangerous strange? Not himself strange? Although well, I, I don't know him, so I'm not sure if he's himself or not, but... He doesn't seem like himself. And I'll explain. Well, well, have you been listening to our conversation this entire time? Let's say no. It was a nice, comfortable ride, and I was really tired. Understandable. I'm very tired too. But uh, he was a great. He was great at divination. Then he foresaw oh. his own death, but we stopped him from dying. Now he speaks more clearly. He feels like a different person. Huh. But. The way you recoiled, is, is he an evil person now? Well, I mean, good and evil is a little harder sometimes to understand in, in fleshy mortals like yourself, and she kind of pokes you a little bit in the chin. Hmm. So, I mean, nothing infernal, if that's what you mean. That's good. But not exactly mortal? It was strange. It, it, it. Do you remember when it rains really heavy in the city, mm -hmm. and and how all the water spouts fill right up, and there's this massive drain of water coming out of them? Well, I flew into the drain once, and I got pushed all the way down to the ground. Ouch! Um, how did you do that? It was looked like fun. <laughs> it was like that. It was like overwhelming, being. Was there an identity attached to this being? Oh, I don't know. Okay. I don't know weird detail things, but 
it was just weird. I'm I'm a little I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare him or anything. I didn't mean. I just. I don't think you did. It was like jumping into something and expecting soft water and rain and finding power and and certainty and 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 something cold. But but not cold in a in a bad way. Not like the winter. That was cold. That was bad. This was yes, more this like. Was terrible. This is more like an ice cube on a hot summer day, cold, it's dark and strange, but but mm -hmm. nice in yeah. a way. I hope he's not mad at me. I, no, I, I doubt he is. That's good. If anything, you impressed him. <laughs> oh, I like to impress people. Yes. But thanks for your insight. You're welcome. Anything else? No, not at not this time. Okay. If you need me, I'll be around. And she starts circling around the horse and starts to kind of circle around the others. I'm just going to like slow the horse down to gradually rejoin the caravan. The horse is, uh, is sort of circles around uh, uh, Hooves' uh, ears and Hooves' ears kind of twitch a little bit and kind of neighs a little bit. And you hear this tiny little... <laughs> she flies away. You... Well. Well, everyone else is having conversations. All right. It's they time to me talk by to myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have Thorn there. Yeah, I got Thorn and Hooves, but... Uh, Thorn is kind of itching a little bit on your shoulder as she, as uh, it watches uh, Prina drive flying by, and you get the sense of, if only I could catch that little thing. A little sense of chase and, and uh, anxiety or chase desire. Okay. No. <laughs> um, Thorn kind of leaps off your off your shoulder, then outstretches his wings and... So with a couple of swoops, they start to start swirl, swirl around. Uh, and I um, scratch hooves behind the ears as I do ascending. Okay. Hooves is right there. The ascending works perfectly. Mm -hmm. Lady M. Kisra. Oh, okay. I think we really need to talk sometime. Did you mention you'd heard Riordan's voice? Mm. I did not mention that, but I did mention to you that all of his stuff went missing and to not tell anyone. Okay. Uh, in that case, I don't mention the uh, you're hearing voices thing. Um, <laughs> so I was a, crying. It's but been a while since we talked, anything. and I think I brought Polexia back into the world. <laughs> that was something so, You know where to reach me. <laughs> well, not necessarily, but... Now, I'm um, pretty sure she can find me at any point she wants. Listen to the loud voice boom from <laughs> <laughs> Um You do hear a response. Oh my god, what have you done? <laughs> um, oh, what? <laughs> we will speak of such matters. And the druids are much concerned with the water god's return. Yeah, so the Igneans. Uh, no response, because you only get the mm -hmm. one sending, but... Yep. Um, but you get the the, the impression... Uh, do make an insight check, actually, as you're kind of parsing through the, the terms and feeling. 23. 23. Um, there isn't surprise, in a way. Uh, and part of it is when she said that the druids are concerned with it, that they have been obviously paying attention to this. Mm -hmm. um, but there is unease. Um, and there's a sense that uh, um, while there's unease, there isn't threat behind those words, strangely enough. And you kind of expected a bit, just because it, when you previously talked about Pluxia, she was one of the ones that very much against um, hmm. the very notion of her. Yeah, but the Mrs. Day has never threatened me. Uh, mm. Well. Yelled at me. <laughs> kicked me out of the house. Scolded. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, no real threats. Mm. Yeah. But while you might have expected to be sort of hearing a threatening tone or concerning mm. tone, there didn't seem to be any of that. And beyond the topic you mentioned, there was no mention of anything else. She didn't ask about her daughter or anything like that as well. Mm. Or, I think or her son or probably husband. Probably kind but. of used to that. Yeah. All right. Where Your mom's kind of distant. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Uh, after that, I I told Salazar to hold on for a second. We're going to go fast for a second here. <laughs> oh, oh my. And you, and you feel a, a, not a superly strong <laughs> grip as he does kind of grip onto your uh, your rib cage, basically. And so you're doing going faster? Yeah, to catch up. Okay. Um, I'm assuming you didn't spread out too far, no. so no. it's still within reasonable uh, sight of each other. Uh, as you reconvene... B- basically a dash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you get off the horse, pick up the horse and run faster. Right? <laughs> I'm not strong, I'm fast. <laughs> right. right. Uh, but you see the city of Ator uh, welcoming ahead of you. Um, the city seems to be a bit of a buzz with activity. Um, looks like a market day. Um, more in the sale, uh, this time of year, in sale of stored seeds that were, were kept. So the, the farms are starting to get uh, seeded and planted. It's later than they would like to do it normally, but obviously winter lasted longer as well. Um, but it seems like while they are behind, they're, they're moving faster to keep up. Um, over the last few weeks, Clark, mm. you've been doing a lot of little jobs from Bazo. Um, he's been finding uh, things that need to be displaced to better homes, as he might put it. Mm-hmm. Um, and has been paying you handsomely. Uh, you have 400 gold for your last three weeks of work. Um, I'll take it. But it's gotten a little bit thinner. Um, the trade traffic is starting to come back into town. But he you get the feeling that he probably... Um, because it was a bit claustrophobic, uh, because there were so many people in town, he had been holding off on some of the jobs that he would have normally done during the winter time, right. and he's kind of making up a little bit for that as well, matching and mirroring in some ways the amount of effort that the farmers and the uh, the uh, the uh, animal people, animal raisers, are are themselves also uh, the furor that they're building as well. Uh, but then it comes to a bit of a standstill about a week. Uh, ago, it's come to a bit of a standstill uh, after a couple weeks of of heavy work. And uh, with not much to do, uh, he's said uh, he brings you in um, to one of the the other establishments, not the Elegant Pony, which Mm -hmm. has been a few times, but some one of the other ones, one of the lesser ones that uh, tends to have a little bit less of traffic, and the traffic's there very deliberately. So not his usual performance stage. Mm-hmm. Um, there have been some interesting rumors that I've heard, and I've been able to confirm a few of them. I understand that Emerald Emakir has come back to the library, for example. I'm not making too many public appearances yet, but I suspect he'll start pretty soon. Now that means that there's certain opportunities that I've heard about that are probably going to be coming to fruition soon. And I know that you're right in the middle of all that with the bunch that you've run with before. That means you're going to be in places that might have other opportunities I can't find here. All right. Do you still feel yourself um, light-fingered enough to uh, maybe catch a few things? that others might overlook? Uh, might be confusing me with someone else. Really? I know we have a large staff. Light fingers are not something I'm known for. Uh, and you've helped me displace a number of different items. Sure. If you don't mind doors being kicked in. That's true. That's true. That part has been a little less subtle than I'm usually used to, but you're effective, so... I overlook any difficulties in that matter. Well, perhaps less light-fingered and a little more insistent on a portion of the rewards than the spoils. From what I understand, there's a few expeditions mounting from the library. Acquisitions will be sent out fairly shortly, I'm uh, I'm told, to head out southward through a quain and to hit a ship going further. But that's well, I have someone else working that angle. Mm-hmm. From what I understand, you might be accompanying the usual friends of yours on a few uh, more unusual expeditions to places that haven't been touched for a while. My feet are getting itchy. I was wondering if you keep an eye out for a few things for me. Sure. I'll pay top dollar for them. 
but I will need them myself. Um, and it could be something of a nice little side um, employment for you, just to keep an eye out for a few things here and there. Sure. And I've prepared a list of things you can keep an eye out for. All right. Clark will take the list and quietly. And he does uh, say these are. In his clothing. And there are prices included on the list, which are expected uh, re rewards if you do bring back some of those items. All right. Um, Have you had any dealings with the um, Kingfishers? A moderate amount. They're not as um, well represented here in the city, as you obviously understand. Uh, but I've had some of my um, colleagues in Aquain who've uh, dealt with them a little more extensively. All right. Well, I'm hoping everything is friendly. Oh, it's been a professional relationship so far. Okay. I've known very carefully where to step and where not to step in my life. That's why I'm as um, fortunate and knowledgeable as I am, after all. How about yourself? Are you acclimatizing to the tour? Um, it's nice to be warm again. That it is. That it is. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have a few more arrangements to make for this evening. And sure. a little bit of extra coin for innocuous questions. I, from what I'm hearing, uh, your friends might have returned recently. Mm. You might want to check in on them and see where you stand. Thank you. Oh, of course. Always a pleasure, Clark. Um, stay in touch. Always. And sure enough, um, the rest of you have arrived back in town. Has probably anyone the day heard of Clark since that thing at the library? <laughs> <laughs> in fact, no, Clark kind of uh, said, you know, peace out, I've got work to do. Um, while the rest of you kind of went about your own business. First he went to bed and to heal. <laughs> oh, that's true too. Took a long nap. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he likes this anymore. You drop Salazar off at the temple, which is yeah. where he asks to be let, let loose. Sure. Um, Zinzalor is actually on the steps. Um, seems to be unsurprised. Um, oh, welcome, uh, good Salazar. It's been a while since I've seen you. Ah, I know that voice. Um, but your name has escaped me. Zinzalor. <laughs> he hears from both ears. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yes. I believe it's come back to me. Zinzalor, is it? Uh, and Zinzalor uh, smiles. Uh, he probably heard the whispers, the stage whispers, um, and welcomes him into the temple. Um, uh, Miyazana Fahana is waiting for you. Uh, of course she is. And I also say, as he's leaving, we're going to have to have more cake soon. <laughs> <laughs> I am not sure how well that recipe is going to be remembered, but um, I'm going to try. If they'll let me near the kitchen, that is. <laughs> Why wouldn't they? I can't see it. And you return back to your respective locations? The, yeah. Probably the, you're returning back to the library. Where are you heading? To? Uh, I'm going to uh, go back to check in. Uh, do I have the seed, or do you have the seed right now? Uh, well, I thought I would have given it to you, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So I go back uh, to Ferendra's. I would have asked along the way, do you have a plan on where this is going to be planted? I have an idea. There's actually apparently a grove, a, a druid grove, in Vator. Interesting. That was abandoned. Probably a reasonably safe place uh, ish um, I want to at least look into it um, if not yeah no I think that would be a good idea um, and yeah I go back to uh, Ferendra's okay. get Rascal and Brenda <laughs> um, you uh, you find that uh, the gate of the estate mm -hmm. uh, has a second guard where it had one before. One you don't recognize. You've seen they had regular gates. You've been in and out a number of times. Yeah. Uh, and the the new guard, mm -hmm. um, who, judging from his stature, uh, is probably one of the mercenaries that was in the city before. You do know a number of the mercenaries. Uh, most of them left, but those that felt they could find a little bit of extra work here were taken on. 
um, but has a sort of a rougher look than the uh, regular guard that's there and holds you up at the gate but the other guard uh, says well, no she's another one of those druids probably here to see Ferendra is that right yeah oh, yeah I'm the one with the bear uh, the other one just shoots the first guard uh, the second guard a look and the guard just sort of shrugs uh, she's a well-known friend of Ferendra there shouldn't be a difficulty and the uh, the guard sort of shrugs all right I don't care I'll let you in um, you can see that the uh, the griffin the hippogriff rather isn't here um, you would normally see it nested up on top of the stables where they built the rooftop nest for it uh, it does not seem to be here at the moment. There do seem to be additional horses here, however, and a very large uh, wagon. Um, looks like it's kind of rough, not uh, not a very expensive looking wagon, uh, made mostly out of wooden canvas that's been here, and it's kind of shelved up as well. As well, And some, some strong looking horses that you don't recognize are here as well, so the stable is mostly full. Um, but you don't see Ferendra directly. Um, I asked someone, like, near the door, like, if friend rose in. Okay. Um, the, uh, the maid that you run into was kind of just going and looking to get the, the, yeah. uh, regular um, food for the day, getting, getting some of the groceries, um, says, oh, oh no, ma'am, um, Ferendra, I think, was out with the, 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 the beastie there, um, I think he's coming back soon, but okay. the, 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 the lady of the house is home, if you'd care to speak to her. Oh, that would be nice, yeah. Ah, well, um, just the front door, and I'm sure the butler will let you in. Okay. Nice to meet you, ma'am, and she curtsies. I'm just like, okay. I, I kind of go over um, to okay. the front door. Yeah. Yep, there is indeed a, a, a butler waiting there, kind of um, looking impatient. Uh, sees you coming up, looks a bit surprised, um, as if not expecting to see you there. Uh, and... Uh, an older gentleman, kind of well-dressed, but simply dressed. Uh, oh, sorry, ma'am. Uh, I didn't realize you were coming in today. Um, I'll announce you forthwith if you're coming to see uh, the, the lady uh, Alexia. Uh, yeah. That, that would be nice. Okay. Mm. Um, if you'll hold here for just a moment. And he starts to go in. Um, down the hallway, it's kind of a nice wooden hallway, fairly long, number of doors off to the sides. Uh, you see um, uh, a figure standing in one of the doorways, um, kind of looking hesitantly out and then back in. Um, it's very, very dark in the hallway. Um, we're, you're approaching kind of later in the day. There haven't been lamps lit up yet, so mm -hmm. it's very shadowy. Um, but there's something of a chill that passes through your spine as you see seems to be a male figure slightly taller than you um, and then it backs away into the room and then the door slams behind it hmm. a couple of minutes later um, you hear uh, descending from the stairway at the far end uh, with uh, grace that you've seen many many times before Lady Alexia Frendrill um, walking down um, wearing um, for her it would be wearing a drab dress um, for most of it, just about anybody else it's probably the most expensive thing that anyone would ever wear but as you know her wardrobe tended to be uh, brighter and more brilliant uh, she tended to have very fancy embroideries and yellow, uh, or sorry, uh, blue and white ribbons that are often embroidered into the, the clothing and uh, extra bits. But this one seems to be Careful, simpler. Here. Someone's moving the table. Was it me? <laughs> <laughs> um, <the> chair. <laughs> uh, but when she sees you, she, she strides over to you and she kind of straightens up a little bit, almost to her full normal height, which stands over tall of most people. Um, ah, my dear, my dear, it's been some time since I've seen you. Come in, come in. She grabs you by both hands and starts to pull you in. Uh, I've, been, I've been staying with uh, Frendra. She's told me much of what you've done, and uh, I understand you've learned the Hippogriff's secret as well. Yes, That's, it's uh, been so much fun. It's rather remarkable. 
Uh, come, come, uh, in here. And she leads you off to a, a drawing room off to the right-hand side, the opposite side of where you'd seen that person uh, standing. Please have a seat. To what do I owe this honor? Oh, uh, well, I've, I've been staying here, and I mainly came to collect my bear and my raccoon, um, but also to check in with... Stupid cat. <laughs> but also to check in with Verandra, because I have something... Oh, well, I think she's just out in training at the moment. It's it's good to see you, though. I, I've only recently come back into town, and uh, I'm still adjusting back to life in the city, catching up with all the matters that have been happening at the council, for example. I understand it's been a rather uh, wild time here. Um, yes, winter was kind of a thing. <laughs> it, it was a thing pretty much everywhere. But uh, you seem to come through okay, and the city seal seems to be in one piece, more or less. Lots so of hard work. I'm, I'm happy it. for that. Um, she seems a little nervous or uncertain of herself. Um, she offers you some some sherry. It's a, a, a very light, uh, very dark, uh, light tasting, but very dark red uh, sherry in small little glasses. Um, she offers one to you and then has her own. And you can see she smiles and then drinks the whole thing very quickly down. It's normally a kind of a sipper. Yeah. Uh, but she has it very, very quickly. I do sip it. Okay. Um, I ask her uh, if she found her brother. There's a sort of a dark look that passes across her face and then it's gone in an instant. She's very capable, you think, of, of, of literally putting on a face. Um but your instincts are a little bit faster, perhaps, than hers. Yes. As a matter of fact, I did. Um, it was a difficult matter, and I had to arrange for him to be extracted from an unfortunate position. But uh, he's back now, recovering, mostly. So I'm happy to have him back, back where I can see him, and back where we can speak once more. A queen is a... Um, it's a terrible place. I hope to never travel that far south again. Now, I know that they've not been able to send sendings to him and have, like, he's... I believe it failed, yeah. Yeah, yeah I hadn't at the yeah. time. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. they're rather... No you got no answer, yeah. which is, yeah. as far as you know, a failure. Yeah. Then we get no answer from Alexia either, so... Yeah. yeah. Uh, so can I insight check what she's saying? Sure. Probably not. No, that's a seven. Or an eight. Okay. What are you looking for? Just to see if she's hiding something. Okay. Um, you're trying to get some 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 sign of what she's saying, but you very quickly discover her kind of putting on uh, the politician face that you've seen numerous times before. Um, very commanding, very much take charge of the moment. And she starts to ask you questions about the situation here, and um, also asking you questions about Alistair, and asking questions about about what he was doing, and how he arranged for the mercenaries to be here, and how all of that went out. I didn't do much work with Alistair. I mainly just traveled to make sure the food got safe from place to place. Of course, of course. I heard of the Druids' operation to make sure that the people were fed. Well, I, I think that was quite admirable. And uh, you must pass my thanks along to the, the, um, I'm afraid I don't know the name for the leader of the Druids, but um, to the leadership, if you do speak to them. Yes. Good, good. Tell me, um, how is young Zakis doing? As good as ever. <laughs> um, the way you said that, though. <laughs> <laughs> he mainly reads. We don't really hang out much outside of the work we do together. I see, I see. Well, perhaps I shall stop into the library and interrupt his reading briefly. I suppose he would deign to see a council member for a brief period of time. You probably should. It'll, uh, it'll annoy him. <laughs> well, and she, there's kind of a, a, a bit of a smile, but also a bit of a uh, kind of an annoyance that passes at the same time. Uh, well, it's anything certainly not that, my anything intention. Anything that gets him out of his reading annoys him. <laughs> yes, well, I, I wouldn't want to annoy him as such. But oh, by all means do. 
He's annoying. <laughs> Frankly, I find him a bit charming, but that might just be my perspective. Well, uh, and uh, the butler comes to the door and kind of nods. Um, if you'll excuse me, I think that Ferendra will be along shortly. I have some other business to attend to. Uh, so much accumulated while I was away. Perfect. I'll just be outside, out back with my bear. And I'll try to find the raccoon. <laughs> Good luck. And she quickly leaves with the, uh, with the butler. Um, if the druid marries her, she'd be friend for She's beautiful, I know. <laughs> uh, she goes across the hallway to that room you had seen there before, and the two of them move in very, very quickly. Do I see anything? Um, no. Pretty much her blocking the doorway. Not intentionally, just happened to be walking straight inward. Yeah. Uh, and the butler doesn't go in with her, but seems to be going off somewhere else. I don't trust this. I don't trust this at all. Okay. Um, so you go back out to the, yeah. the stables and find Brenda. Um, uh, you find Brenda swatting at birds that, that are kind of trying to roost on the trees that are nearby, and everyone's a kind of taking a swipe at them, kind of leaning on these trees. And these ones are fairly young trees because they were just planted maybe a couple of years ago, so the tree's kind of like bending over a bit, and the birds are flapping out. And she kind of lets the tree go, goes back up straight. Um, but uh, as soon as uh, she, you kind of come into the yard, you see her uh, tip her head back and sniff the air and look straight over at you and then come charging straight at you. Hey! <laughs> um, at the, even, even knowing Brenda as much as you did, there's still a moment where it's like, doesn't look like she's slowing down at all. <laughs> Um, and does kind of bowl you over, but in a fairly gentle way. You take, you know, a few bruises here and there uh, as it turns into kind of a fur ball. Um, and you kind of have to convince Brenda to roll over a little bit because Gren Brenda has grown even in the last couple of weeks, um, starting probably because uh, being fed a fairly well good diet over the last few weeks as well, um, and starting to get a little restless, you can tell as well, probably why she was going after the, the, uh, the birds. Um, it takes you, uh, actually make a, let's see, let's make a, we'll call it a survival roll. 18. Okay. It still takes you the better part of an hour to locate Rascal. Um, and uh, Rascal is, um, apparently has been uh, the bane of the scullery maids for a while uh, has a bad habit of kind of sneaking into the rooms, messing up all the rooms, and then they have to go back in and clean everything back up again. I'm so proud. <laughs> um, but uh, you kind of are following the trail of destruction in some ways, uh, and then see Rascal kind of crawling out of one window, crawling along the side of the outside of the second floor, and then into another window with the the, the maid kind of swinging a a, a, a pillow case behind her. I like whistle and try to call to him okay. to go over. Um, there's a sort of whiplash moment because uh, the instinct to react to the, the thing kind of colliding with the instinct to crawl in the window at the same time uh, throws Rascal for a loop and you watch with a bit of horror as Rascal lets loose from the second floor uh, attempting to kind of both look at you and crawl in the window at the same time misses the window and starts to fall. <laughs> eagle. <laughs> eagle, okay. Make a, uh, let's say a dexterity saving throw with the eagle form. Can't squirrels climb up mm. an entire building according to that meme? They can, but when they fall off a building, they still fall. <laughs> and it's not a squirrel, it's a raccoon. Right. That's what, I, I, was thinking, heavier. I was thinking raccoon in my head, and I pictured a raccoon in my head, I just words. Ironically, my character in a game yesterday had a raccoon in his head. Nice. Uh, uh, Seems dangerous. I rolled a six. I think it's a plus... Two, maybe? Okay. So. Uh, it is not a graceful catch. Uh, it is more like you meant to swoop in and catch underneath, and you were just a second too early, and you feel the thump as a uh, rascal crashes off of your back and then rolls onto the ground uh, and kind of starts hissing. Um, probably at, at you, at the world, at everything at the moment, and starts to scramble away. Um, I turn back into myself. Hey, okay. get back here. Uh, seeing you, there's sort of a look back, and then there's the 
Make an insight check. Not 20. <laughs> Not 20. There's the crawling forward and suddenly, oh, I'm so injured. And the <laughs> leg is broken, maybe. <laughs> and kind of crawling. And the eyes are kind of drooping a bit. And there's this mewling sound coming out of Rascal. And it's there's a definite sympathy play going on there. Rascal's good, but not, not as good as, as you. Uh, sort of crawling over towards you and then like uh, exhausted. I pick picks him up, up a little bit. Um, it just kind of goes limp in your, in your hands. Uh, and it starts to nuzzle your neck as you get closer. It smells awful. You're not really sure what he's been eating recently. Um, and the whiskers kind of tickle. If ever I have a thousand gold hanging about, I will pay you to awaken him. <laughs> <laughs> um, a few uh, minutes later you hear the sound of uh, the wings of the hippogriff returning in fact you hear two sets of wings returning uh, as you suspect that Ferendra has returned with the uh, the griff, uh, hippogriff have we named this hippogriff? Glamourquill what was it again? Glamourquill Glamourquill I'll try to remember that um, returns back to the roof and is delighted to see you and the cadre of animals once more. Uh, again, uh, Rascal seems to be taking on the, you know, oh, woe is me. <laughs> I'm so wounded. Uh, and I make sure he stays in my arms so he doesn't go missing again. Okay. <laughs> uh, you do see, you feel him jerk from time to time in terms of like, oh, that looks interesting. If I could get my hands on that and then the hands start to twitch a little bit as well. Hey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, um, Ferendra greets you warmly yeah. uh, and uh, uh, it's good to see you back again uh, she changed transforms obviously out of yeah. the hippogriff form the hippogriff kind of sits down nests itself and roosts again uh, and I see you found him points at Rascal Yeah. he's impossible I tell you impossible yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, whereas uh, Brenda has already started to cur to curl up in sleeping now at the kind of the bottom yeah. of the of the uh, roost. Um, we'll hold there, and you can have a conversation with a friend in a moment. We'll return back to how about to the library? Okay. As you return back in, I see how much work has piled up. Well, the first thing you notice is when you come through the front gates, mm -hmm. um, you see that there is. A lot of work going on in acquisitions. It looks like they're they're mounting up and getting ready, doing some last minute practices. Mm -hmm. You see Holmara um, uh, shouting out orders. Uh, you see um, uh, Milda um, actually kind of lieutenanting at the moment uh, as she's kind of keeping them organized, but probably with the softer touch rather than Holmara, who literally will shout at them until they do the right thing. Um, whereas Milda is more kind of, no, let's, let's keep going. Let's make sure everything is right. They've got, it uh, looks like four horses and uh, a wagon with two horses on it, ready to go, loaded with equipment, um, various various kinds. Looks like about a half a dozen of them are getting ready to go. Okay. Um, do I walk by them or? You, know, you pass by them as you, as you come through the gates. You choose to interact or not. It's your, your choice. Oh, I smell that. It's like something going on. Where are, you, oh. where are you guys off to? Hello, Zakis. Hey, no long you time look like you've just come off the road. I. That's because I have. Ah, yes. I will go to the shower soon. <laughs> it was more the the rumpled uh, robe and uh, the fact that you have a horse with you. Um, but yes, yes, we're being sent. Um, there's uh, uh, an island that we have to take a look at. Which one? I have to go look at my notes. <laughs> I just mm -hmm. realized I didn't have the name on hand. Uh, da -da -da -da. Pardon me for one second. To bring up my maps. Um, oops, that's not the map I wanted. To be fair, there are a lot of them. There's a, yeah, a few. There are 54 other ones. There's, there's still uh, a more that I want to do with those two, actually. Ah, where did it go? I can't find my map. This makes me disturbed. Um, that's not it. Ooh, this is this is a little bit disturbing. I literally was looking at it just a little while ago, and now I'm. Poof. It's like my battery pack for my phone. I found it after a year of looking for it. Within three days, just. Gone. Yeah. 
Well, I will bring up another list. I have those. I have them here. Um, it's the the island of Boira. Uh, I've never been there before myself, but I hear it's beautiful. B o y r a. Yes. Um, In the common just, spelling. If we just hit the pause button for a sec. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna check my notes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a. I don't have a teleport circle for that one. Cool. What are you hoping to retrieve from there? Well, um, the, it's a little bit sketchy at the moment, uh, but I understand that there was a uh, cave-in in in a mine, and in the mine, <laughs> in the cave-in, it revealed a large cavern which had uh, some old temple, I think. So we're going to see what's. What's what? What needs to be extracted if we can? Lay a claim for the library. And We've got to hurry quickly. I understand the Delvers has already started to send their team down. Oh, we, we can't have those guys, no. Uh, oh, what, well. uh, out of game, what do I know about the island of Boira? Uh, Boira? I mean, out of game, like, asking to the DM. Um, it is one of the, uh, the sort of tropical islands that's in the, the Great Sea. Um... It uh, tends to be um, when they trade off the island. There are fruits and things that come from Boira, mm -hmm. but trade is limited. Um, apparently, it's difficult to to uh, bring a ship close to Boira. Um, you've actually read a couple of the stories, um, sort of the the epic stories telling of the uh, the teeth of Boira, They're referring to the reef off the shore. Okay. I'll ask her, uh, how are you planning to bring your ships next to there? Are you even using a ship? Well, as far as I know, we'll be chartering a ship in a quain and heading over that way. Mm -hmm. I'm not really the ship person to talk to, but I haven't really been on a ship before. This should be interesting. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Oh, thank you. And if I haven't, if, are you leaving today? Soon? In a few hours? Uh, a few hours, I think. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. I'll keep going. Okay, you head back in. Um, you uh, haven't been away from the library for that long. Cave in mine. mine. Mm -hmm. I'll ask you before I leave, was there anything particular about this mine, like anything marking the outside? I'm afraid information is pretty scarce. Yeah. We know it's there, and not too many people have heard of it yet. Um, we have people who send us leads all over the islands, and uh, they thought it would be of interest to us. Okay. Apparently there's a statue of some kind they saw, though. A gigantic statue? Um, I don't think it was large, no. Uh, some figure, woman, I think, with wings. Sounds terrifying. Hopefully it's only a statue. I'm sure it's beautiful. When you head back in, there hasn't been a lot of uh, 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 work come in. You've only been away for a couple of days. Um, in fact, things seem remarkably unbusy at the moment. Um, Alfric is doing the normal work that he's doing, which is mostly in cataloging himself. He's the one that's usually cross-referencing and cross-indexing books. Okay. So he's, um, he's, so he's working. Job, he's working on the index. Yeah, okay. he's, he's basically doing that that labor that you were doing, Hello, greet him. Um, Hello, which Alfred. is sort of very long and intensive work. Um, uh, he kind of barely looks up from the book that he's working on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll wink at him, even though he's, he doesn't see me. It's he like, doesn't oh, notice at all. You can see he's got he's got the parchment beside him where he's working out the the different indexes he needs to be able to. to I'm gonna fulfill. look around though. Is he using an unseen servant or a mage hand by any chance? Doesn't seem to be. Okay, he still no. has some learning left to do. He's definitely got some learning left to do. <laughs> um, you go back to your desk yep. and you find a uh, small piece of parchment with a note on it. Okay. Um, I'll open it. Okay. It's addressed uh, to you, um, to Zacchaeus. I believe I have the place where we need to start. Who's it from? Come see me with the rest of your team shortly. Signed, I. Just the letter I. In Rome. And you notice that the, the, the note seems to be pretty vague. Um, but he does suggest it's not just to for you to come. Okay. I'm Rune. 
uh, I believe a number of your disciples are still in the city at this point. Mm -hmm. What did you direct them to do? Uh, well, currently they're staying at the inn, uh, the elegant pony, and uh, basically just helping out around the town so far. Okay. Um, also, ask them to keep out, keep an eye out for any place that looks like it's abandoned but could be turned into a temple, like any old inns or towers or that sort of thing. Okay. Um, they have been looking a bit at. I mean, it's, it's hard to tell at this particular mm -hmm. point because some it's buildings don't. Only a couple get, of days. And they also don't get occupied until the summertime. Yeah. Because there's a, a flush of people who come in for the work and then. The buildings that are used to store any food mm -hmm. or doing the work doesn't really start up until fairly oh, yeah. shortly. I have a better way of finding, but just this gives them something to do. Um, do you remember exactly who was with you? I don't think I have that on my list here. Uh, it kind of keeps changing because you added someone named Duncan mm -hmm. and be another person. And Duncan was one of the people who came down from Far Haven the first time. Uh, nope. No? <laughs> nope. Uh, I, I thought there were a number of I people think, who didn't get named. Well, so. I think you have, uh, yeah, I think you have a couple of lists, and, uh... uh no, I have the list of people who are blessed. Yeah. Yeah, the list changed slightly last okay. session, because Duncan and, and one of the others, uh... Okay. And, uh, why whatever reason, I can't find the... Oh, there it is. Duncan and Breda were the two new ones okay. that I didn't have before. Uh, but yeah, Invitor, there's Duncan, Breda, uh, Otnar's brother. Otnil and Otnar, Arlen? yeah. Sorry? Arzen is his brother's name? Yeah. Uh, and then the uh, human brother and elf sister. Uh, Taylor and Urena. Yeah. Yep. Also, Iro and Ella are Invitor. Right. Uh, but did not uh, join. Right. Um, you return to find that uh, you don't see Iro. At the inn where you had left. Mm -hmm. her. Yeah, she was wandering around mm -hmm. the alleyways. Yeah. Um, the rest of them still seem to be there. They have kind of come in and out um, different times. Uh, they don't really know what to do uh, and they find they're somewhat restless. Uh, Arzen, in okay. particular, is, uh, is sort of wanting to do something but doesn't know what to do at all and is starting to get um, frustrated. Um, his brother is here or is his brother back no, in? No, his brother's in Aquain. In Aquain, okay. Um, uh, so he approaches you when you come in. It's good to see you back again. Um, yes. I hope now we can Sorry. begin the mission as necessary. Uh, yes, we had an emergency to attend to. Um, I probably will be coming and going as things happen, but uh, I will try to see that everything at least gets started. I see. Um, before I have to leave again. Um, as boring as he could be, at least we were learning something from Damon mm, Triesque, but... Uh, I wish there was a way to have him here, but uh, unfortunately that does not seem to be the case. He seemed to be bound to that place. Yes. Spirits often are, I believe. Um, it's not something I've dealt with all that much. My brother would know a little bit more about them. He's better mm -hmm. read than I. Um, for now, let's get everyone together. Um, I've got a bad feeling about Iroh. I think that she's finding it difficult here. I have no doubt. I think that she's been at least one fight, if not a, a handful of them. I'll try to find her. Um, we have been meeting generally here at sun, Sundown, outside of the inn. So we can include her. I've tried to make sure of that, but um, the centaurs don't seem to have a great reputation here. No. No. Not in this area. Clash of cultures, I believe. That's true. Well, uh, let's get together here. I will go try to find her. All right. Uh, do you want help? Um. Sure. All right. And he uh, he grabs uh, Duncan, who's also there. Um, okay. And he's 
a bit younger. Uh, Arizon's a bit older. Uh, not, well, not your age, obviously. Um, whereas Duncan would be kind of in his late teens, early 20s. Arizon would be in his mid to late 20s. Okay. Um, and the two of them uh, pair up. Um, have you stabled your horse? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, hooves would be uh, staying at the inn. Okay. Um, Duncan pipes up. I've never met a horse quite like Iro. Uh, wait, is it proper to say that? Is she a horse? Probably not. Um, My father and I his whole family raised it. horses, so I'm familiar with them. And I believe she would find it highly insulting to call her only half of herself. Uh, right. Mr. Zakis did call her a pony, you recall. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I meant no harm. I meant no offense. I just, I mean, I didn't really know. Well, it's a good chance to think over the way you f do refer to people and see if perhaps there are changes need to be made. Right, right. Is that is that a lesson? It's a life lesson. Do, you, do we, what do we, do we call you something, sir? Cameron. I, I know that's your name, but do you have a title I should use or something? Not really. Yeah. Uh, you could call me Cleric Cameron if you need to, but that's kind of just my occupation. We I don't mean, have a church yet, so. No, I mean, and I'm still not entirely sure what all this is about. I mean, it's fascinating, and, and uh, meeting that Damon feller, he was kind of neat, but I mean, you just told me to keep a mind of who, how I talk to people, so I thought I'd better check to make sure there wasn't something I should say, like, you know, I know some of them say, your your worship, or, mm. I don't know, sir, what... I don't think there's any reason to worship me, although I think a couple of people have tried. Well, I don't, uh, I don't know much about it, how it works. I'm just, I don't know. I haven't really thought about ranks or anything, so for now, just call me Amrun. We'll handle that later. Oh, right, Amrun, if you if you insist. But I mean, you are correct in that not all churches do that. I know the Ignians have flame keepers and flame walkers and flame other things. Well, I'm not too familiar with many churches. Or... There was a few small temples back home, and mm. there were some other other folks out in the woods did what they were going to do. I don't know exactly what it was, but... And, of course, I heard of the, the Ignians. Those folks are, are pretty much everywhere, and they let you know, but... Mm. Um, they seem pretty organized. I'm not surprised they have a rank system and structures and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just remember when my, my dad was... You know, bringing horses home, and we had to make sure that certain horses were in certain places, and you had to respect them kind of as a... It's like a pecking order. You don't expect mm -hmm. them necessarily, but... You, you suppose Iro has something like that? Well, they probably do. I mean, there would be tribal leaders. You suppose she To be honest, them. I'm not sure why she's not one of the leaders, but maybe she is a leader, but just below the others, I don't know. I mean... And speaking to her, as briefly as it was, did feel like she didn't know where to fit in. I'm just wondering if she might need that a little more than even I do. Yeah. Well, if I can find a new place, we can at least make the place that she could stay and hopefully feel comfortable. Yeah. Maybe a space with a bit of extra yard. Yes. So she can stretch out. Yeah, um, but to do that, I need to go talk to the council. Right, so not right now. Yes, uh, perhaps find Iro first. I'll try to talk to them tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, we'll go around and either okay. listen for a fight or heavy hoof beats or... Something like that. We'll check the alleyways. It takes you a couple of hours to, to find, because uh, it's a fairly large city. Um, Duncan has a few instinctive places that he wants to check. Um, they're mostly more open spaces. Um, there's a, 
not a lot of green space within the city. It's mostly cobblestone and and, uh, and rock. Um, She's taking a number two in the old druid site. <laughs> Uh, Fertilizing the earth. And between him and, and Arzen, because um, Arzen knows a few places she has gone before, places mm. he has found her before, uh, it takes a while, but you end up finding um, kind of the warehouse district, actually, um, not far away from where you know the the, uh, the soup kitchen had been offered. Um, you hear the sound of Iroh's distinctive voice, strongly and firmly saying, I am not your horse. I am not here for your amusement. You will not touch me or hand me in any way. I will not carry your bags. I will not deign to leave, keep, leave you alive if you persist in such things. And you come around the corner to find her standing off against uh, six young men, um, probably in their mid-twenties, uh, kind of laughing and uh, circling her. Um, she has drawn her glaive. Um, and from the distance she can get with the glaive as you've seen her uh, she could easily reach any of them they don't seem to realize they're as close as they are and they do seem to be kind of diving in to kind of slap her on the, on the rump um, kind of playfully and you, you okay. make an inside check <laughs> before you blast them <laughs> well that's a 25 25? Iro is displaying a fair amount of of uh, resilience and restraint, but you can see the way that she's gripping her glaive, uh, that she's just about to strike one of them, and if she strikes them with that glaive, they will die, most likely. Well, okay, first thing I'm going to make my voice real loud and say, what the... Well, they wouldn't have, a, they wouldn't have hell. Uh, yeah. It's hard to come up with swears in a fantasy world. Yeah. Um, I assume there's many hells. Um, there are concepts of hells, and there would be kind of a, a, a leftover concept. What in the name concept. of Ignis's armpits is going on here? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love it. Make an intimidation roll. Quote of the day. Ooh, that's not good. Six. Okay. The voice kind of reverberates down, but you kind of are hesitant in trying to, trying to figure out what to say. And what the name of, and then you realize you're, you're, you're invoking Ignis, which is not something you're kind of comfortable with. And does Ignis even have armpits? Uh, as the, uh, the, uh, they all, everybody looks to see, see you. Uh, Iroh is, is, uh, still on the, uh, poised to strike. Uh, and you can see that while she's distracted for a moment, one of them has come and taken a very, very strong str smack across her hump, her rump rather. Um, and uh, um, she looks like well, she's about to react to that. I want to cast a hold person on him if I can. Okay, on the on the guy who is trying to strike her. Okay, or does he strike her before I can get there? Uh, can... It kind of happened. It was mid midway, and the distraction helped him complete it. Okay. Um, well, in that case, actually, I'm not going to hold person. Uh. I look at him and uh, with a command say, dance. <laughs> hmm. He has to make a wisdom save. Yeah, it, it's weird because it's kind of replicating another spell. Which um, one? Command? Well, there's a there's actually like the there's a unstoppable dance spell. It's a greater boogie. Um, yeah. I'm mm -hmm. kind of wondering if it only a lasts one round. Or Odo's Irresistible Dance? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Odo Luke's Irresistible Dance lasts for a period of time. This lasts for his next action only. It's okay. One, one moon walk and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so it is what kind of s wisdom save? Okay. What's yep. the target? 16. Oh, okay. Oof, not with a 2. <laughs> uh, as the fellow sort of jumps back and uh, starts to, to, uh, to kick up his heels a bit, uh, and much to the amusement of the other uh, young men who are around him, and Iroh kind of hesitates seeing him react in this strange way. I walk up to the group of them. Okay. They start to slink back a little bit. He stops almost immediately because it's only a few seconds. <sighs> really, boys? Um. Iroh, please put the... Glaive away. 
I'm Shall sure we not the... teach them a lesson for such disrespect? Well, I plan to do that, but hopefully not lethally. She spins the glaive over to the blunt side or blunt end of the glaive. <laughs> then I shall not leave any of them dead. You see them backing up a little bit now. <laughs> There's six of them? Um, I think six, yes. In Vitor, what are the rules on assault? Uh, Does this count if, as just joking around and... and uh, it would be whether someone wanted to press the charge, and then there would be a fine, most likely. How wealthy do they look? Except as we've learned with Clark, if they're rich. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's true. Well, the, the wealthy well, the rich can, can afford to pay the fine. Can, yeah, afford to do a lot of things. Um, they look uh, a bit shabby, um, a, bit, uh, a bit rough around the edge. Nothing, not really nice clothing. I look at them and say, are you bandits? Uh, one of them on the other side kind of puffs up his chest. Yes. Are you attempting to rob her? Uh, he looks a little confused for a moment. Uh, kind of looks to the others. One of the others says, no. So you're just attempting to humiliate her. And there's a confused kind of expression. What's it to you, old man? I look like I'm 20. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's, um, what's it to you, man? I'm also wearing really nifty-looking armor. Mm-hmm. Um, the lady here is a friend of mine. City mosquitoes. If you have slighted her, then perhaps the law needs to be involved. Are you standing up for her? I need no one to stand for me. And she's kind of I do not the stand up for her, now. I stand with her. You are extraordinarily lucky. Pfft, what do you mean, lucky? She could have killed you. There's a little bit of nervous chuckling from the rest of them. Uh, she swings. Uh, let's see how this goes. <laughs> she swings and clocks one of them on the side of the head with the blunt end of the uh, glaive. Uh, he goes down. Flops over. The rest kind of start backing away pretty quickly. Imagine what would have happened if she'd hit you at the stabby end. I am going to attempt to moralize them. <laughs> okay. I'm going to attempt to show them that they should not be treating people this way, no matter what they should look like or where they should be from. Okay, make a persuasion roll. Way better than my intimidation, hopefully. Okay. Give me time. I got a, a, a 20 total. Okay. Uh, two of the young men, they're like, oh man, kind of turn run away. Oh god, he's the, talking at us. The other three that are still conscious grab rocks and start pitching rocks at her. Uh, as they're backing away. Uh, she charges. It's a response. I hold person on all four of them. Okay. So that's it's a, take a level five. What what's the save? I believe that's also wisdom. Okay. And which one was Ivor? Was she the one casting the storm when we first encountered them? Uh huh. She could easily intimidate them instead. Yeah, wisdom save would be Just paralyzed. That one. Okay. okay. Sixteen. Sixteen. Iro succeeds. The other three men are, are frozen mid uh, mid throw. Iro. I will extract my justice. Fine. Then slap them on the ass all you want. It was my intent. And she spins the glaive around to the pointy end and flat-handed on the on the glaive, uh, hits one of them who doubles over, uh, kind of pitching forward, the hold being broken. Yeah. Um, and then kind of starts crawling and running away. You can hear a bit of sobs as he's crying. Mm. Actually, damage doesn't break it. They just get a save every turn. I think they get a save immediately if they get if the hold of the... if they're damaged by... The okay, other. it doesn't really matter in this case, but, uh, yeah... Yeah, he's, uh, he probably falls down anyways because he's paralyzed and gets knocked over. Hmm. 
Mm. Uh, okay. I don't have it on there, but that's right. That's uh, that's a change that I've yeah. Gotten. Sleep does end, but hold yeah. doesn't. Yeah. There's a number of them to do though. If you're if you yeah. if you take any damage, which is why they're always dangerous to use in spell and yeah. uh, combat. It's usually the ones that don't have the save every round already. Okay. Um, well, um, yeah, he's so. he's he's knocked over, and uh, and the other three very quickly are also knocked over very carefully. Uh, do you release them at that point? Nope. Okay. I walk up to them where they're laying in the dirt. Uh, I mean, they get an additional saves so with someone like Big Free at this point. I say, much worse could have happened. Don't go poking the bear. Uh, um, you have seen very little of what she can do. Two of them kind of leap to their feet, uh, free from the hold. Um, and as you say, don't go poking the bear, she kind of leans forward. <sighs> and they go scattering down the alleyway. Tell um, your friends. <laughs> I'd hate for this to have to happen again. And and I'll let guy. the last guy go at that okay. point. Um, you can see him wanting to retort, but just turns and runs. There's nothing you can really say. Leaving the one guy who's unconscious on the ground. They did not take him with him. I'll wake him up. <laughs> and kind of seeing Iroh standing over it behind you, uh, flinches a bit and starts to try to drag himself away, well, crawl away. I'll help stand him up and say, acting like an ass is just going to get you treated like an ass. You could be dead if she was not so well-intentioned. And if I hear of any of you doing this again, there's going to be consequences. He's kind of just, he's more looking straight at her, but he, he's nodding along with your words. Uh, can I go now? Yes. Okay. And he just bolts, uh, kind of holding his head. You see him kind of run down the alley and kind of lean in towards the wall as he's still a little bit uh, mm. uh, schnuckered and kind of whack, run, runs on the, the wall, kind of yeah, crawls Takes one point unconscious again. <laughs> uh, but oh, takes it. off. I did not need your assistance. Not to handle them, no. But the path you're going down could cause you unfortunate interactions with the guards. This path is yet as in many others. All the roads are more or less the same here. What is special about this one? I'm talking your path in life. My path in life. Your way of handling being in the city. I understand that it's a shock. It is not what you're used to. It is a horrible life. place. Filled For a certain point of view, yes. Filled with no nature. How do you walk upon these stones all the time? It is as though you are stepping on gravel. A rock fall. How yes. can you find yourself a certain foot? You get used to it. The same as if any of those idiots found themselves in your lands all of a sudden with no one else of their kind around them. They would die within a day. Most likely, yes. You may suffer a similar consequence if you do not adapt to your situation. Are you saying that I should let them treat me badly? Oh, God, no. Uh, if they slap you, feel free to slap them. Just... Do you have... ranks, stations, stature in your tribes? Of course. What would happen if you... What would happen if the leader of your tribe abused you as those morons wished to and you fought back. I would take my justice from him or her. Okay. So you wouldn't stay your hand because of their position even though their position allows them to punish you for defending yourself. Why would I not protect myself? We take what we need. We mm -hmm. are told to be taught to be self-sufficient, and no one can take that from you, mm. of any stature. If they would do as these foals did, then mm -hmm. they would learn a lesson. That is one of the differences between 
your culture and this one. Here, the reason they have this many people living in this small an area and thriving is because they work together. Most of the people here would not make it on their own. However, by working together, they can survive as a larger group. That leads to certain things. For one, here you cannot simply take what you want, although some may try. You it, hear feet shift a little bit uh, nervously at the, at the refutation of that. I feel like you've touched a nerve. Okay. It's unfortunate because I don't remember what I said. Um, you can't just the, do what uh, you want, is what you yeah. said. Um, your tribe has laws, correct? We have rules. Yes. So does this tribe, effectively, or group of tribes, uh, as they may or may not be so united. Um, one of the laws is that you can't simply take something you want if it is of someone else's. That would be stealing. Yes. I could not walk into the market and just take something because I want it. I have to pay for it. If someone has a nice jacket, I cannot just take it from them without the possibly the guards being called on me. If your need is greater, then it deserves to be with you. Anything in the That's market is for the consumption of all, is it not? No. It is not. No, and that's one of the less fortunate things, uh, is it is for those who can afford it. There are a lot of people who cannot afford much, and there are ways that people help them get by. Uh, perhaps you've seen the, I mentioned the soup kitchen mm -hmm. that was near one of the places we're at. Um, it that, seemed a civil place. Yes. That is a place where those who cannot afford to get by go to get food so that they may continue. It is an unfortunate side effect of the type of culture that they have here. There are great things that can be done, but there is even greater stratification. And the wealthiest do not always have the best interests of the poorest in mind. Wealthiest? Those with the most. So they have taken more than they need? That's one way to look at it. They have more than they need, at any rate. In this society, what you have paid for or made or otherwise legally obtained is yours and no other is supposed to have the right to take it. Uh, and yet some have taken more than they need. And they are allowed by your rules to do so. Yes, it is more than they need, but it is not more than they are allowed to have. It is unjust and unfair. Your there rules are, are broken. Uh, the rules are broken all the time. There are no rules that work in all cases. and. I will fully admit that there are flaws with this system. That is part of my hope is to fix some of those flaws with the system. Perhaps you can learn from my people. I believe there is much that we could learn from each other. You will notice here that there are thousands upon thousands of people here. I have seen this. They yep. are crammed together in small boxes. Yes. Uh, it is an unnatural way to live. Not to them. Although, druids probably would agree with you, so perhaps the use of unnatural is uh, appropriate. Uh, it is not a, a thing of nature, this creation of society. Um, but you notice how few fights there are going on at the moment. I have seen many fights. Yes, 
Burst but down. compared to the number of people living here, they are very low. There are perhaps a few dozen fights that happen out of tens of thousands of people. I have seen those who have more than what they need and many who have less than what they need. Your society, this rules, I do not think it works. It seems to spread more misery. It is similar in some unfortunate ways to the take what you can rules that you espouse. That is not correct. It is. We do not take what we can, we take what we need. And you have no people who take more than what they need? Others make sure that they do not. That is our rule. Well... If you are greedy and you take more than you need, then you have hurt all of us. And we do not allow that to happen. And that is absolutely successful amongst all the tribes and all the people. I cannot speak for all the tribes. It has worked for us. And we know much, and we share that knowledge in exchange mm. for what we need. I'm not so certain about the sharing of the knowledge. I have, as... Some have little to share, or ask to travel, and need um, protection. Well... I agree with you that there are significant problems here. None of those problems are going to change fast. It is true. It is not my tribe to fix. If... I know you have been asked to come and to listen. To uh, learn. To learn. If you are unable to stay in the city, that will not be possible. I had thought we would be at the temple in the rocks on the land of Bendra. And we were for a while, but that is not a place I wish to keep open until I am able to keep it safe. And I do not have that power yet. I see. So you wish to stay here, in this city? This is where I will be staying for the meantime, although I will be living on, living, leaving on occasion as things need to be done elsewhere. I'm afraid that starting the temple is not the only thing I'm currently involved in. If you are unable to stay in the city, then perhaps we can come up with some other time or You place. are staying here, and you are building your group here. If yes. you are doing so, then I will stay here. I will find a way. I have heard your words, and I will try to understand your strange ways. I will not take kindly to those who would berate me. Mm, nor but, should you. But one of the things I wish to change about this city is that justice here by and largely goes to those with the most money. Then we are to challenge that as part of your church? Eventually. First, it is my hope to make lives better for those who need the help. But once we have a position here and enough friends and allies and political power, influence, then we may perhaps change the rules to make them better. This sounds like it will take many years. Uh, likely, yes. May the great horse grant me patience. I want to make sure that you understand, if at any point you do not wish to stay, I will understand. I have a duty, and she's, her back straightens up, and she slams the, the glaive on the, on the ground. I will be here to do what I need to do, As you to do. get what I need. I will tell you that I am attempting to find a place for us to stay that would be more convenient for those of your stature. Uh, perhaps a place that we can turn into uh, a place for our own use. 
rather than staying under someone else's roof. How do we take it? Well, I'm hoping that they will give us one. But I need to talk to the city council about that. I wished to find you first, as I'd heard that there have been altercations. I have had many who have attempted to assault me, or who simply disrespect. I have told them and taught them many things. Um, are there, like, people around? Not this particular alley at the moment. Okay. Um, you get the impression um, that uh, some kids running, screaming out of the alley probably convince a lot of people not to walk down this particular yeah. street. Uh, I'll start walking towards the exit. Uh, I'll say, um, for now, I'm afraid all we have is the elegant pony, which is, of course, not to you your see her face wrinkle at the name of the place. Yes. Um, I do not have a place for you to stay as of yet. You are obviously capable of surviving on your own here. Um, of course. But uh, perhaps if uh, uh, meeting up with the others during the day might help especially if you were to talk about your culture with them. Help each other to understand. Uh, to understand why the, the name pony, or the word pony, rankles. Obviously, you are not a pony. You are not a horse. Uh, but to those who have never met a centaur before, you look like a, a, a woman and a horse, and they may not understand that they speak incorrectly. I can tell them some of the stories so that they may understand the histories of how when horse and human were created from the centaurs, when the severing began and the minor races were created, I could teach them understand that there may be people who hold other beliefs in their heads. We have met many people who speak incorrectly. We teach them as we can and pity them when we cannot. Good. Everybody's going to get along. <laughs> get along. Um, I will uh, get to the end of the street and I, just like the, an actual street, and hopefully there's mm -hmm. people around. Mm -hmm. uh, I will raise my voice again uh, and say that uh, attempts to humiliate those under my protection or those who are friends of mine. Oh, dang it. I forgot where he's going with it. Um, <laughs> TLDR, don't be a yeah. dick. <laughs> basically, yeah, it, it's. Um, What's the intent? You don't need. To yeah, basically, words. just do not uh, attempt to assault or humiliate uh, those of my allies or my friends, or you may face the wrath of Deluxia. Okay. Uh, Iroh beside you lifts her glaive above her head with one arm. Uh, and shouts into the, the square as well. You get the feeling that she's trying to figure out how she fits into this. Um, and while she does not have the projection that yeah. your voice does, uh, her voice does carry considerably. Um, and you, you kind of appreciate that her people probably shout across long distances quite a bit. Um, but she raises the glaive uh, and says, And any who threaten the people of Paluxia, the followers and the preachers shall know that they will face the wrath of Iroh, the shadow speaker. And you get the impression that you kind of declare protection of her and she now mutually declare protection of you uh, publicly okay in, 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 the, in the crowd. And it feels almost ritualistic the way she does it, as if this is some, touched into something that she actually understands. Cool. Um, um, and I, before I... I head off, I do tell her that that 
thing she did with the clouds yes. before, uh, that might prove much more intimidating than the glaive. It is not to be used for simple intimidation. What is it for? Excuse me. <laughs> it is there for larger matters. Concealing our numbers, keeping ourselves in the shadows where we can protect ourselves and where we can strike when needed. It is not a matter of a simple tussle with youths, foals who know nothing. Good to know. Well, um, I must be off. Uh, I will return I to the outside of the elegant inn. They just call it the inn if you want. I think everyone understands. Uh, I will give her a bit of a nod, bow. Okay. There's a very, thing. the smallest of nods, but it is respectful. And she heads off, and you head off. Yep. Okay. We are just a quarter after five. I don't know if we want to take a break today, or if people had a chance while other people were going on to dash out of the room. What's going to be the next thing? Is it well, be longer? presumably, you have just received a note where you want to gather yes. everybody together, so presumably you might act on that. Oh, definitely. Although we do have one conversation left to do here. I, do I don't intend to i got to speak with Alexia at some point, too, though. Okay. Well, that'll, that'll come up later, because you're not even aware she's really back. I thought um, I was. Well, you heard that she was back, but... Um, you have not seen her since, yeah. and she's not had any audiences. Um, but it's the only thing I Well, yeah. you, you weren't her audience. Yeah. You were actually here to see Ferendra. Yeah. And then they kind of resumed you were here to see uh, Alexia because Ferendra was out. I can't do ascending because I'm still out of third level spells because I'm assuming we haven't had a long rest yet. Oh, it was a whole day traveling back. Yeah, so we, you, we you would have we you would have camped somewhere along the way. Okay. So this so yeah, it's it's a it's a full next day. The thing I go off and do is just. Uh, uh, make an appoint make an appointment to see the council. Okay. Uh, see the point. council or see the councilors individually. Like you want to stand before the council? Yeah. Okay. They put you on the docket, but they do have yeah. a lot of business to to do. Um, how do you just briefly? What's your subject matter? They would want to know what you're presenting or what you're claiming to present anyway. Setting up a temple. Okay. Uh, that will go down the docket quite a bit. <laughs> Um, it's not a priority for them. Um, you and Ferendra catch up a bit. Not much has happened a lot in the last day or so, but no. um, the, uh, the Hippogriff does seem to be responding well to the mutual training. She's hoping that you'll be able to do that again. Yeah. Um, and as she's kind of leading you around the property, taking a walk, and she's pointing out like the the uh, the trees and how she's been able to kind of this, the reason that tree is as as large as it was, even though Brenda was able to push it over, is the fact that Ferendra has actually been coaching that tree to grow, uh, and it's it was a seed uh, about a month ago. She planted it in the snow in hope, and it has grown into a sapling, which where with enough enough leaves that birds can actually land in it as well, and it will survive Brenda pushing on it. Cool. Um, she has a knack. Um, she seems to enjoy it. Uh, but as she's leading you around, you get the sense that there's something she wants to talk about, but she hasn't brought it up yet. Um, I ask if she had had the chance to talk about to uh, Alexia about the grove. And there's a kind of a still silence, and you feel like there's a stiffness that goes in there at that moment. You probably hit the nail on the head. Um, she takes a deep breath and turns to you. Uh, I've had a f few moments with her. Mm -hmm. She's still getting back into things after getting her brother back. Have you seen him? I've not seen him. You might have. He's more than a, more of a dark cloud at the moment. He's quiet. Get a bad feeling. I don't know what she did, and she she didn't want to talk about it. But I don't know about him, and she will not talk about it. I don't know where she went. I know that she was down in a queen for a while, 
and then we lost touch. She sent back a few messages here and there, apparently, but they did not reach me in time. One message came in the day before she arrived, saying that she had found her brother and would be returning in a month. That had been delayed for a long time. Winter uh, being what it was. I think so. Um, but yeah, because a part of my regular bag, not the bag of holding, <laughs> uh, the seed. Her face goes wide when she sees it. You planted it in the middle of a dark spot of the forest. It, I, it started to sprout and she kind of gingerly takes it from you. It, it looks okay, but... Uh, what? The isk thicket is a little strange, but that's, that's why I planted it there. I thought maybe it would help to tame the woods and, and to bring some more light. The woods there were malicious, to say the least. They were not very talkative and not really cooperative, but I didn't know, I don't know if they were malicious, but I was, I thought that would be even better if it was a place that needed redemption, that, that who, did you dig up the seed? I didn't dig it up, no, someone else did. And she kind of is is running her hands over the roots that have come up because the seed had started to sprout and the, yeah. the the casing has started to crack and these these tentative roots have come out and almost like she's caressing a child or 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 running her hands over precious artwork she's kind of uh, running her fingers along to it and kind of murmuring a little bit almost to it as a being itself uh, and you can see as she does um, the roots seem to glisten <laughs> slightly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, almost as though there's a little little sap or something coming out of them. Um, we need to plant this soon. In this state, it's vulnerable, and it, I mean, it could. Uh, has it been watered recently? No, of course not. It hasn't started sprouting again. Uh, we need to find a place for this. That's why I was asking if you had had the chance to talk to her about that. No, no, I. I she seemed to be very preoccupied, and it felt like it wasn't something that we needed to do right away. But now I need to get this in the ground. I can talk to her. I'll see if I can. I'll see if I can talk to mommy. Your. You mean I'm Kisra? Yes. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. I don't often remember. Sometimes you're not much like your mother, and I. I have you have you talked to her recently? No, but I have people who can probably get a hold of her. I'm sure she's very busy. I wouldn't want to... She's basically impossible to get a hold of 90% of the time. I think I've said at least five words to her and maybe received two back. Actually, I probably said about 50 words, but... I mean, I get that, but at the same time... I got a lot of scoldings, so it balances out. <laughs> I'm sure she means well. Oh yeah, we totally deserved it. <laughs> oh, well, in that case. Still, um, I'll ask Alexia about the property again and see if we can move forward on that. And I'll ask if there's anything we should do. With the seed? Yeah. I'm going to put it in... I think there's an old clay pot around here. I can fix it and then I'll put it in that to at least give it some chance to live a little bit and then we'll transplant it. That, that would be a good I won't idea. urge it to go any faster. I'll let it take its time. But I wouldn't be surprised to see a shoot within a, a little bit of time. Definitely not. It's, you only did this a few weeks ago. Right? Yes. So, yeah, it's already further along than I would expect. Yes, and she kind of lovingly looks at looks it over and is kind of tracing the cracks in the shell where the roots have started to pop out and kind of uh, almost, again, almost like treating a child, um, very genuinely. Well, um, I, should, I should get this planted in the pot soon. Are you staying around or are you... Um, I think I have to go out soon. Um... 
be sure to check in. I definitely will, and I'll take this one with me. <laughs> take the rascal. No, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm right. like, I, I kind of, I kind of the the attention again. Rascal is like, oh, <laughs> uh, tongue lolling out of the mouth. Yes, please take that one with you. And there's um. there's a sort of look and. It may have just been kind of a tired look, but you could have swore that Rascal just winked at you and then turned back to her with the, <laughs> the sickened expression. Um, and I take Brenda and him with me. Okay. Uh, and I go find... The guards at the front gate are... Well, one of the guards, the newer guard, is a little bit surprised to see you being trailed by a bear and kicks a Literally very Literally the one back. with the bear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and the other one just sort of smiles and, and waves, having seen you a number of times over the last you know month or so, yeah. um, with uh, with Frendra. Uh and you leave. Now you with a note. With a note. I know everyone was stay, was staying at the Elegant Pony. Are we, Pretty sure. Are we That's still allowed to stay Pony, or is it racist now? <laughs> 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 I think you should find out. <laughs> okay, I'll go. I'll make my way to the Elegant Pony. Same. Fetch Emrud. Walking out of the library. Okay. For convenience, I do the same. <laughs> okay. You're not convenient, are you? Clark's been following him. Huh? <laughs> okay. And uh, is Alexia's place before the Elegant Pony, or is it after? Uh, it's after. The Elegant Pony's not far from the library, but her place is actually more on to kind of the northwestern side of the city. Okay. There's a fairly rich neighborhood there. So, yes, you find uh, Amrun kind of probably speaking a little bit with the, the other disciples that are there, informing them that uh, Iroh is, is going to be coming back. She's not back yet. Apparently she had a few errands she wanted to run. Hopefully nothing too brain-breaking, but... Um, but she was promising to come back to be outside the place um, later on that evening. Um, I sit at the table and awkwardly tried to grab his attention. And it's like, hey. Hey. <laughs> Is that awkward? Hey. Uh, I, I mean, were you done with your disciples? Or? No, we're just sitting here eating. Is that a yes or a no? In any case, I have received a letter from Emerald, or at least I'm assuming the letter I. That's, for that, that's a letter. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> anyway, he wants us to meet with him as quickly as possible. It's sure. understanding that he has a task for us. Of course he does. Um, sure, we should meet with him. We I should all meet up the, afterwards, though. To the yes. end. Do you know where okay. our friends uh, Clark and Elzara would be? Oh, Elzara. Oh, <laughs> Zach is in the shoulder. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's very, very quiet. Uh, and I want to get to clang, the clang. end. Clang, clang. New armor. I, <laughs> can I you say Brenda hi instead of trailing me? Stay, stay here can yeah. I make a and behave. <laughs> so Brenda, uh, as typical, just sort of mm -hmm. falls, and falls asleep kind of there. Uh, kind of facing outward, uh, leaning up against the steps going in. So you do see a number of the patrons kind of like starting to walk and then kind of walk over to the other side when they see a sleeping bear next to the stairs. Um, uh, Rascal uh, uh, kind of goes over to get on top of, of Brenda kind of kind of like a cat in a way needing his way in and you're pretty sure he'll be there at least two seconds I like of, behave <laughs> okay <laughs> yep. if I can just like retcon the last few minutes if, instead of saying Emerald can I just say it was signed I sure Wanna sure make smirk smirk yeah just because like in case there's people listening I'll I like, mean the room is fairly full I mean there's a number of people that are definitely with him but uh, there are other people coming in for the evening as well. Um, and yeah, uh, you're saying and we should probably find Elzera, and Elzera literally opens up the door at that yeah. particular point. And Clark is right behind me. And, uh, I never got the chance to make a perception check to see if he was following me. Uh, what is your passive perception? 12. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure your stealth Spitty, bonus busy is... Busy streets. Yeah, well, what's, your, what's your stealth bonus to begin with? Uh, it's two. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, but it's not at disadvantage anymore. Right, Cause right. Because it's shiny new armor. Right. I mean, that would make his passive stealth 12, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, for story reasons, we'll, we'll, we'll let uh, Clark have his moment. Um, yeah, you find yourselves at the inn once more, the place so where you've met shoulder, super... Like, yes, I will have a... Oh, hey! <laughs> the, uh, the place where you've met several times, in fact, to conspire and plan your next moves. Oh, yeah. So I'll mention to them that there is a letter on my desk from I 
stating that we should get in touch with him as quickly as possible. I don't know about you guys, but this sounds like a mission or an adventure. Can what are you doing? Where? Guys Who knows? At one point, send a sending to mommy for me. Oh, I did yesterday. Oh, well then. Yeah, but I need to ask her what to do with that seed. Oh, I forgot to mention the seed. What seed? Just a minute. Oh, uh, that seed. Right, sure, you should be handling this outside radio. I don't have the seed. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, they're talking about a seed. You don't know yep. what that means. Yep. Some guy. Mm, whatever. Oh. We- oh. Lady M. Kisra, Elzera has the seed. She wants to know what to do with it. She I think no. it had started sprouting already, too, so we may under, be under a time limit. Someone was trying to use it to open a portal to the place full of tentacles. I'm pretty and sure that's I think you ran out of words a while ago. And the tentacles. <laughs> uh, not even that far. That's a lot of words. Um, the response is, I know not what seed you mean, but seeds are meant to be planted. So I suppose that would be the best. I'll send her another one just to clarify. The, the seed, seed of the big tree that got burned down by the wild hunt last time we were there. I put that out. Mm-hmm. Magically. Yep. Mm-hmm. It burned down. It was burned. Well, it burned. It, yeah, it burned. But yes. Um, there's a hesitation, which may mean the spell did not work. And then there is a response. That seed is sacred and may only be planted on sacred ground. It must be blessed by both the moons. Perhaps my daughter can tell me this herself. I don't know what it is. Third one. <laughs> not without becoming a cleric or a wizard, apparently. <laughs> And you're not exactly easy to get a hold of, so if you feel she needs to talk with you, perhaps you might want to talk with her. <laughs> if, if you're stop passing the thought, go. Yeah. Clarks are going to order drinks at the table. Sure. We're going to be sure. here for a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, the response is, uh, um, my, my daughter has ways to send me messages. She always has. If she chooses not to speak to me, that is one thing. I am busy. Yvonne's being a bit of a bitch. She says, if you have something to say to her, then you should say it to her. She's busy, and it should only be planted in sacred ground. The sites made sacred by the two moons. So, uh, Clark, how you been? I see you have a nice new armor. Yeah. Cool. It's a bit of a gift from you folks. Right, everyone did mention that. Thanks. That sentence makes complete sense. Um, just like... You know that tower we read? But I... I can I send animals to specific stuff. places, but I need to know where she is! There's a mission <laughs> circle. I can use it. We'll try it sometime. Okay. Perhaps she'll have calmed down again by tomorrow. We'll try her again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing that we have to describe is you do have a new bow that they came as part of this deal. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if that's yeah. been delivered yet. You have the bow? Yeah. So it is a dwarven longbow, yes. which is a very strange piece of work. Those are very uh, tall dwarfs. It, it's, uh, well, actually, it's adjustable. Um, and it will actually be adjustable for any size creature. So even a tiny creature could use this bow. It literally folds in on itself. Um, it is made of wood, um, which you have a feeling was a, a compromise at some point along the, along the routine, uh, because you've seen a lot of, of dwarven-made uh, uh, items and they tend to be made of metal. But this bow is actually made of wood. Uh, it may have been made for an elf uh, as well, uh, just because, again, not a, a material they would typically use. Uh, but where there would be uh, the use of cogs or pins, they've used uh, roots and treated, um, treated vines uh, that have the strong uh, capacity. But literally, it is a bit blockier than you would expect. Uh, as it will fold in as necessary, uh, and then there's a way to tighten this, the uh, the uh, string of the bow as well um, to allow it to be resized but still be considered a long bow. Um, uh, and it's more or less a recurve bow as well, so it doesn't have just the straight bow shape. It has a it has a secondary bow on the both ends, uh, but it is a very strong bow, and it takes a bit of time to get used to it as well. 
I, I play with the string. Ooh, this yeah. is nice. <laughs> so, you continue to talk about things? Yeah, just chit chat. I have a proposal for the group. Mm-hmm. I do, before you bring this up, um, I do bring up that I've been writing what, what we've been going through over the winter. I'm getting used to being famous. I kind of... Living alone in the woods is kind of boring and needed something to do. I never understood why you did that. I needed it. The library's full of books. Surely you could have come by and a few books. No. No. Your, your <laughs> people don't like loaning stuff. I mean, I'm sure... I she's could. related to three of our staff. Surely she would have been able to get it. I don't know. You guys are pretty tight-assed about that sort of stuff. <laughs> She was with us to begin with. She was invited by the amateurs. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been kind of writing down what we've been through. So, but I have nothing really. There's what I have. And I, like, take out a bunch of, like, papers and just. You upend the bag of holding <laughs> and it's all scrolls. I have a scroll case. <laughs> um. Let there be but, <laughs> Let me see the parts about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't understand. I'm not trying to judge you, but Emma once wrote something about me, and it, it was, it, it was, it was. No, no. The idiot dropped his book again. <laughs> Almost killed a horse. <laughs> yeah, that's about what I'd expect from <laughs> the one who was writing this piece. Um, but yeah. <laughs> well. If we're going to be doing these various things, finding the old libraries, finding the old temples, and taking down bad guys, for one thing, I think we need to have a a united front, a a group, a membership. Will this of us interfere with my career at the library? Not any more than you constantly leaving your job does. But I still have a title of me being at the library. <laughs> yeah, this would just be... I mean, Zekis, the, li Zekis. the library wants to send you and the rest of us out to do things. Yeah. This would be a, united, a, a name under which we could be hired to do things. Along with rules as to how things are split. Now, I'm assuming the role will be evenly. Yes. Or whoever finishes well, whatever trinket we find. My thoughts were thus. <laughs> he pulls out what looks like to be an actual official paperwork thing. <laughs> um, uh, we, the undersigned, hereafter known as the members, agree to the following rules and requirements. Oh, I spoke to a lawyer uh, about this. Uh, as a condition of joining the Private Adventuring Fellowship, hereafter known as the company. One, the company gets a share of all profits as though it was a living member. These profits, hereafter as called... to a dead member. Hereafter called the... Please don't interrupt me. <laughs> hereafter called the Treasury Fund will be kept by the Treasury Officer and are be used to pay for potions, lodging, food, and other expenses that happen while we're on a job. So that we aren't constantly paying our own stuff and then trying to figure out a split for it. All money is obtained on a job for the company will be divided equally amongst all members participating in it. Money is obtained by members in their own works remain theirs. So it's like a second job, in other words. Uh, yes. Uh, personnel hired to help on a job are to be paid an adequate wage from the company's treasury fund. Um, which also helps with us giving an entire share to uh, lesser NPCs. No such thing as an NPC. Nope. Um, so, no, he does it, basically that way, those of us who are doing the dangerous jobs are fine and we can hire people at a good wage. <coughs> Non-magical equipment obtained on a job for the company will be given to those members who need it. If none need it, it will be sold and resulting profits split amongst members. Weapons, that sort of thing. Magical equipment obtained on a job for the company will be given to those who can best use it or those who have the fewest uh, magical items as decided by those members on the job. Uh, in a case where an item is specifically given to a member by someone, that is an exception to this rule. That item is theirs, as it was given to them. 
Uh, members will not put innocence or the natural world in danger in the fulfillment of a job unless it is impossible to avoid. It seems very open to interpretation. Carry on. Most things are. A member who breaks one or more of these rules may be removed from the company by a majority vote of the other active members. New members may only be added with the agreement of the majority of, of active members. This seems political. That is it. Or I'm not running for office. It is legal. <laughs> yes. Um, these are simply rules for how, for the most part, for how to divide stuff up that we would normally otherwise uh, do anyways, but... Uh, Basically, loot is being divided five ways, one yes. to the part. To, to party uh, as a whole. Effectively, yes. Potions, yeah. And any, anything you get outside of doing the job is yours. Five ways, but we're four. One way... Plus the company yeah. for the treasury fund to yeah. pay for... Because, like, yeah, gotcha. to, yep. to avoid what happened last time with me buying a bunch of potions and right. having to be refunded by who used them. That's yes. too much. That's too much math. So mm -hmm. out of game. It's much easier to things. set up one fund ahead of time. Yeah. Exactly. Um, now, I don't know if I can sum it up much gravitas, but uh, <laughs> I've been thinking of what to call us. Do we really for need a name? Or we just paint a target on our backs. Well, no, we need a name. I mean, for one thing, I think the name has to be known because part of what we need to do is spread hope and show that evil is not winning. You do not need to be a spokesperson for the group. Well, of course not. But at least our name should be out there showing people that... Because um, if people want to hire us, what are they going to call us? The, the, the four weirdos? Right. If they can hire us, they have to find us. What about the adventuring team? The A-team? No? Yes? I get Perhaps. the impression that Amarin has an idea. I have a thought. I think I think with, with that paperwork, I think he's been thinking about this far too much. Let him For finish. once we agree on something. <laughs> what can I do when I get bored? I start thinking of what I can do. <laughs> um, is it Clark, mm. you're a survivor. You're That's debatable. <laughs> well, you've survived so far. I may be very lucky. You are a half-orc in a land that doesn't have many of them and doesn't like orcs all that much. You know, I've noticed. Mm. You are enduring. More than some of us are. Zacchaeus. Yes? Your goal has always been discovering the truth. Mm-hmm. Knowing what is out there. All the things. Picking through the lies. I am about life. I wish to preserve it and maintain it and make things better. Elzera, you are about the things outside of civilization and making things flourish and grow. There is an ancient language, which for anyone watching, yes, I'm going to mispronounce, it's done on purpose. <laughs> Do I know this language? Can I make a history check? Oh, probably. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty, I'm pretty darn certain that he w would know it, since I'm uh, using Latin. And ah. Out of anyone, the library should know it. Uh, by the way, Amrun does not know Latin. Uh, <laughs> he probably spent some time with a, uh, a book of Latin going, oh, this means like, like this, like this. Um, Grammar. He said, Obduro, Veritas, Vite, Niteo. You pronounced that wrong. And together, yes, I know. Huh? Maybe I should, instead of truth, I should be nitpicking. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's a fifth word, Sodalitas. It means fellowship. Companionship. Fellowship of the Own? I even made a logo. Fellowship of the Own, I like that. Where's the P? There's no P. Fellowship. 
Oh my god, wow. So that was <laughs> No, it's like, I was thinking F, I was thinking F in my mind, but it's like, no, it said P. <laughs> Plus it's in Latin, so it's S. It's yeah. sodalitas. Uh, O-V-V-N-S. Uh, we could even shorten it to abjuro veritas, if people want to, uh, which would mean enduring truth. Which, is not the best. But, um, he said, uh, I even had this commissioned. Um, he said, I think uh, we need to have, I think something like this will sound, I mean, to some degree it sounds pretentious, but uh, that can help. Um, in some circles it's called branding. Uh, this <laughs> should help people remember us. And hopefully assist us. I like write this down on, on like a scrap of paper and those notes that I just dumped out. I'm like, <laughs> ohms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a printer kind of pops out of your pocket and you're kind of tired. It squints at it. Did somebody misspell snow? <laughs> That's what I thought too. <sighs> yes, let's be snow now. Um, I don't think I want to remind people of snow at the moment. But uh, this is just a suggestion. Um, if there are... It's better than the four weirdos. Hmm. I'm sure it'll go well on our gravestones. I was thinking so. I mean, there's Such some really nice thinking. fonts you can get on gravestones. <laughs> Not that I plan on dying or any of you dying. Speaking of which, we're going to need more diamonds soon. Um, <laughs> I used up most of mine resurrecting Salazar. Surely we could find another one. Well, let's hopefully. How is the uh, group fund right now, anyway? Well, it doesn't exist because the group doesn't exist. Um, do we all have to contribute, or do we just add things that we Well, uh, I mean, we could contribute shares right now, or we could wait until the first payment we get comes in and split. Um, I'm in the favor of the latter. Yeah, I mean, I have not much right now. Um, now, see, this is space for members. Yes, I know, I've, I've noticed. I've, I deal with paper all the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sign it. That way we Let can, me look at it. That way when we talk to uh, Immeral, we can talk to him as a group, not merely as his employee and his employee's three friends. Um, also, while he's reading that, um, I want to start an orphanage and Pet's Place. I don't know if Brenda could stay. She's a little, I mean, she's probably nice with kids, but I don't know if... She mainly sleeps. I don't know if the city will let me keep a bear with a bunch of small children. She can, she can be the guard bear. They may still object to it, uh, but we'll have to see. Um, I mean, Rascal causes more problems. Mm. Is there That's a, a signature. Quill and ink yeah. provided, okay. or some such. I'm assuming that you have. I'd one. have one. Okay, okay cool, have. excellent. Yeah, we'll Clark does have a dagger, but it might be a bit too severe for this. <laughs> yeah, he goes stab blood. <laughs> it's like, huh? I'm gonna keep that contract. <laughs> contract si signed in blood. How bad can that be? Uh huh. Um, now I think I'd like a. Uh, an addition to the temple that helps take care of kids. And I think hooves might like it uh, if uh, that was there. So maybe hooves and the other horses can be uh, kiddie entertainers. We're going to serve hamburgers and there's going to be slides. Clark <laughs> um. barely looks at the document, signs me. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Do I get a share? Yep, I'm good. Um, well... We should post a picture of that on the group. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, after when this is posted. Makes it all official. Add description of innocent. 
<laughs> Wait, did somebody sign that? <laughs> With uh, well, so, yeah, someone put an asterisk after will not put innocence uh, in danger and put uh. add definition of innocent. <laughs> um, well, I this guess is like finish eating and then head the over to mandatory the company place. elements. You have, of course, the butler, the torchbearer, and the lawyer, the accountant. Edwin's like, what can I say? I'm a trader. Sometimes we have to deal with contracts. Um, hey, as long as this well, probably gets us on an official like listing of groups or something. So yeah, maybe we'll be a guild someday. Mm. Yeah, officially mercenaries. Only outside of work hours. <laughs> Technically, you are correct. By the way, we got to get you switched over to acquisitions. Maybe. Although I suppose it doesn't matter. What's going on in the next edition? I, I suppose it sure. doesn't matter if your boss is sending you out. I mean, it doesn't matter what branch you're in. You're going anyways. Well, if the head of the library is sending us out, all of uh -huh. us out. I, I guess we have our first job. I don't know. If Possibly. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to pay us. Because well, I'm kind of an employee of the library. And well, he better pay the rest of us then. Well, he better pay, he better pay me too. Anyway, you're I mean, getting paid while you. you're getting paid while you're away. Yes. Right, we have to uh, go, I believe he's, do I know that he's still at the Temple of Nemozini? It's a reasonable guess. That's where he tends to stay. Right. That's where we took Salazar. Excellent. Maybe they've been having barbecue or something. Hopefully they save us some. Anyway, I will, we have to meet up there in the very near future, but I do have somebody to speak to before I go there. It shouldn't take too long. Who? Alexia. I heard she's back. Ah! Cool. She's really busy right now. She, she said that she would come and find you. At the library, but I'm not there. If I find her first, I'm sure, he, I'm sure, I'm sure she will. I'm sure yeah. she can find you. Yeah, but we have stuff to do. So you're suggesting I don't meet up with her before we meet with Emerald? Yes. I mean, if she's going to meet, uh, meet up with you anyways, might as well do it when it's more convenient for her. I think she likes you. No, no, not at that point. But uh, I remember when you guys had met at the the right. Gate, Marius's blessing. Uh, uh, talking about Marius's blessing, I didn't go to that, but I did see her at the gate. Uh, oh no, you you were spying from the other uh, from the other roof. Uh, well, no, that was during the date with Emma. Yes, but th uh, the, their first meeting was at, at the date. Yeah, no? she. Did, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you didn't meet her there. Emma, she, she was, was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, there wasn't a lot of interaction, but that is the first time you ran across her. Fine, I'll go collect my things and I'll meet you at the Temple of Nuazade. Okay. So I'll go collect my things and... What are you collecting? My stuff to go adventuring. <laughs> hey, sure. I mean, Look, no. that entrance maze is, is potentially really long. We might need adventuring supplies to get into the temple. But I'll swing by Alexia's place. Uh, Clark will ask where your cart is. Oh, it's in the... Wherever it was that I parked it, I did find a place last session for it. That, uh, is this... Yeah, it wasn't at Dee's Liveries? Yeah, you, I think Where you had so. to work done on the the, the, um, the coach before? Uh, possibly, yeah. Like, I, I basically am just renting a spot to park it for now. Okay. Till I get the temple started and have a place where I can stash stuff. I have enough things now that I don't like have enough way too, the shoulders to carry them. So ah, if I can yeah. make use of the small space yeah. in your wagon, I'm sure I can make yeah, use of Yeah, certainly. Her, her house is in the yep. northwestern quarter of the city. The temple is more central. It's not far away from the library. Okay. But if it's close to the library, then I can... Um, is the first by. donation to the... It's far uh, from the library. Yes, yeah, the, her, her place number? is far from the library. The uh, temple is close to I'd the like library. I'd like to present my... Uh, Trusty. Kind of uh, imagine that there's a central square. And that's, mail of chain. Those are all there. Okay. As a sign of good faith. Elzar is basically saying we just sure. signed a thing to to agree to do the thing, and we've been give we've already been giving an inclination that we have a job. You're on company time now. <laughs> well, the, the note was but, not necessarily urgent, but it was you do know that this is yeah. a concern of his. Yeah. Um, you also get the impression that the note was, come and meet me and I will tell you about what I would like you to yeah. do. Yeah, I mean, Not I'm come and meet me and you will go immediately. So you have some time to prepare. Okay, so as long as I have time to speak to Alexia at some point. Probably That's up have. to you. This, uh, this yeah, well, I mean, after we've talked with Emerald, I mean, he's not going to teleport us out or anything. Are you sure? 
I'm pretty sure he'd have a hard time teleporting anything out of that temple. I don't know. He is Emerald. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I keep hearing that name. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Who is it? Trust me, I'm pretty sure he exists now. Mm. We've seen him. You've seen well, him. He, uh, well, he... <laughs> Let, let's say four fifth of it, four what's, fifths of him exists. What's really funny is how much more like Salazar that Amrun is starting to sound. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that he exists. He... I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. of it. It all started after he drank that tea. Hmm. Yeah, this has all been a dream. For two years, it's been nothing but Amrun. If you look west, you tilt your head, you can see him. Like <laughs> how long? How much longer is would, would it take me to swing by Alexia's place? Uh, basically, it'd take you about twenty minutes to get there. Because you'll be walking across town. Okay. Should I do it now? If you want to. I wanted to, but other people didn't want me to, so I, I don't know what to do now. Hmm? Well, you can tell it's... them, hey, wait, I'm going mm-hmm. to go check it on this first. Or you could just go and do it, and we'll be stuck waiting at the temple for a while. Mm, that's true, too. That's what I was going to do, but then I'll be an asshole for doing that. <laughs> well, yes, but that's not out of character for sometimes. Yeah. Zach is as concerned usually are Zach is as concerned. If you want to go by your place, go by your place. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you head over to uh, the Ferendral Estate? Yeah, but to be fair, like, I already picked up all my adventuring supplies before I went to the Elegant Pony. What I said about I gotta pick up pick up my supplies was just a cover-up to excuse the extra time. Okay. So you, you're lying to everybody about, the, about that? Much. Okay. I don't think anybody really cares to question it one way or the other. <laughs> um, uh, huh. Takis never has a second cup of coffee at home. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Was that the Maxwell House commercial or something? I forget. Also airplane. Also airplane. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's that's perfectly fine. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it's getting to be a little bit later, but uh, the front roll estate is there. You two see two guards out front. Um, the gate seems to be closed for the day. Well, not for the day, but the gate seems to be closed. The friend real estate is a fairly large, older building. It has a nice uh, set of stables. You can kind of see the, from through the the metal um, metal fencing around it. You can see the roosting uh, hippogriff on top of the stables they have attached. Um, and you go up to the, the uh, gates. Yep. The, we up to the guards. Okay. Greetings. The guards. Um, one of them nods to you. Haven't seen you a couple of times. The other one doesn't know you from a hole in the ground. Um, the one that doesn't seem to recognize you asks, um, so, um, what can I do for you, sir? Hi, my name is Zakis and Lana Porter. I'm here to speak with uh, Lady Verendral. I see. Do you have a, an appointment? No, but she knows me personally. I see. All right. I'll look at the guard that I do remember. He's been here a few times before. Um, go in and uh, make inquiry inside. I'll wait here. Will do. Okay. And uh, the other guard goes in? I'll follow him. Nope. Oh, okay. The other guard goes in, the gate closes behind him as he goes in to inquire about whether you can visit or not. Okay. Um, five minutes go by. The other guard's kind of stoically watching people as they wander on by. So anything uh, interesting happening? Awkward chatter while I'm waiting. Um, I mean, Madame Ferendral came back. That's pretty tragic, exciting. Which is excellent. I heard her brother was back too. I, we briefly met with him back in a plane. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say that. Wait, what? Why not? I'm not supposed to say, sir. What, what happened? Well, I can't say, sir. He kind of quickly backs away from it and kind of looking around, pointedly ignoring you at this moment. Okay. So, uh, how's the weather been since the snow winter has gone away? Warmer? Yes, I'm sure he's willing to yeah, make it 5,000. Definitely warmer. It's worth a whole yeah. lot more. <laughs> Another uh, five minutes pass. Maybe if you had said, you know, what business you were on, it might have been a bit faster. Interesting. We have a fence. She just knows who I am. Can I see that logo? She's rather busy. Can she return? No, I'm assuming you want to follow up. Okay, let's not get too much crosstalk, because I don't want to lose this conversation in the midst of everything. Printer's not great. Awkwardly, um, like... Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the guard's kind of... I mean, it's not as awkward for him, because it's not like it hasn't, hasn't been something he's done, just sort of waiting for someone there. After about 15 minutes, uh, the other guard comes back out. Um, I, she said it was okay, apparently. Excellent. All right. Well, have a nice day, sir. And the guard Thank you. says, you as well. with me. Enjoy the warmer weather. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, and he escorts you into the door where the butler um, nods at you. Um, 
Yes, I understand you'd like to see uh, Councilwoman Ferendra. Yes. All right, if you follow me this way, and we lead you into a what would be familiar to the audience, the third person perspective, perspective, it's the same drawing room you were in earlier. Uh, if you will have a seat, um, she'll be with you in just a moment. Oh, yes, I do. All right. And the uh, room looks rather um, nice. The desk is covered with papers, probably council papers that she's been working on. You're only left waiting for a moment uh, when the door opens up again. The butler has opened the door, and uh, Ferendral um, breezes in. Alexia uh, breezes in. And you can see that um, um, probably uh, recently uh, brushed her hair. She has a uh, sort of a, uh, an airy look about her, t standing tall as ever, uh, but her eyes are twinkling slightly as she wa walks over to you. Ah, Zachis, my dear. Alexia! Takes, takes you by both hands. It's good to see you. It's been so long. Please, have a seat. Yes. Um, then I have a seat. I'll give a slight bow, too, because you yeah. know she's other uh, Trevor, please. Uh, uh, some Something good for my guest, please. Yes, ma'am. Um, and he goes off to fetch a bottle of something or other. So, have a seat. It's been good to see you. How have you been? I, I've heard good. We've, uh, been a little on. about what you've been doing. You've been away. Yes, away, back, and away again, and then back. It's been such a whirlwind. I know what you mean. It's been quite a whirlwind for me as well. Yes, I've, I've heard recently that you've returned. My apologies for dropping in uninvited. It's, I had to make sure... Understood. I have a lot of folks that need to see me these days, but I'm very happy to see you in particular. Hmm. How have you been? Good. Learning yeah. more things. Good, good. You look well. Going on more adventures. Is that a new robe? It is. My other one got a somewhat ruined. <laughs> it's a hazard. I like, I like of adventuring. I'm still finding some of my clothes that were in storage while I was away. And, but you like it? It's something that I had uh, made for me some several years ago. It looks uh, amazing. And you notice that she is wearing something that does have a lot of little uh, studded gems in it. And she kind of does a little half twirl and... Um, the 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 cloth seems to move in multiple layers, and there's almost a shimmer of light around the edge of it. Uh, she's also wearing some very expensive-looking earrings that have these these enormous enormous jewels in there. Her hair has been swept back, and you can see that there's a tight clasp around them as well, which is studded with small or, uh, orange and, and uh, yellow gems. I sparkle, and the light reflex reflection is amazing. Isn't it amazing? Are they made by a certain gnome, artificer, last name Sorovsky? Uh, is that it? <laughs> no, no, I've fallen out of favor with Sorovsky, but I have a few other contacts. There's some wonderful dwarven smiths who make some wonderfully, surprisingly delicate work. So, I'm uh, so glad that you like it. Yes. So, uh, what brings you by? I wanted to make sure everything was okay with you when I... S I've sent a few magical messages to you and to your brother, to which there was no response, so automatically I, fe I feared the worst. At the mention of her brother, there's a, a bit of a... She turns away slightly. Um, yes, it was... There were circumstances which I couldn't respond to any messages. I'm sorry. I know that a lot of people were somewhat concerned, especially... Alistair Sinclair was rather concerned about my absence, but I'm back now, and I'm, I apologize. So tell yeah, me, yeah, uh, no what sort of messages did you send to me? Asking. And there's kind of a were. there's kind of a, a, a lilt to her voice, and there's a little little playfulness in her eyes. I was asking where you were and if you were okay, because we were in a queen. Oh, you were concerned about me. I'm well, yes. Well, it was difficult, and I had a lot to deal with. Um, but I'm back now, and everything is fine. Good. I I'm glad to hear that you're back. I was told to not inquire about your brother. And she turns away from you, has, your ba has her back to you. It's, it's difficult to see him like this. The last time me and my compatriots saw him, he was... Well, I'll describe how he was. You know. Mm-hmm. Last you saw him, he was fine. You were talking to him in his in his uh, hidey hole. Yes, I'm afraid. I'm afraid he might have gotten into trouble. I have a hunch of who did this. Do you? Yes. 
she turns around again. You can see now there's little glistening spots at the corners of her eyes. She was trying to hold in some tears. But she walks over to you, kind of sweeps over to her with a natural grace, and uh, and kind of kneels down on one knee before you and puts her hands on your knees. Tell me, tell me. And she looks up at you with sincerity. Who do you think did this? Who's responsible for this? Did he tell you anything of what he was looking at or looking he for when he was there? Tell me much. I tried inquiring magically from directly me to him. No, but no other curious ears listening in, but there was a magical force that compelled the truth to come out. I don't know who was watching during that time, but he may have gotten in trouble with the people we were both trying to find out more about. I don't I'll want this to, to rest more squarely on my shoulders, but she I kind think of... I had a part to play with it, and if there's anything I can do to somehow make things right or go after the people who caused this, let me know. You're so generous. And she bends down and puts her hand, her head on her hands to draw on your knee. It's so good to know that there are people like you who I can rely upon. Can I do an insight check? Sure can. 20? Not natural. Okay. You've seen Alexia Frendrel on a number of occasions. Before you got a chance to meet her, you knew her as one of the council people, mm. one of the council members. And she was fierce, and she was strong, and she was independent. She was um, a force of nature to a lot of people. Not crying on my knee. This does not feel like the Alexia Ferendril that you've seen. Even the, the few times you've met her in person, um, she seems to be overwhelmed. Okay. And she kind of suddenly stands up. Oh, I'm so sorry, and brushes off her dress a bit. No worries. I'm. This is just so so much, and seeing you again after so long, it. It made it difficult to to keep it in, and I, I must look a fool. You must tell yeah. no one that I've behaved such a way. I will not. Everything is safe. And kind of drawing herself up a little bit. But what? But what you know about what happened to my brother may help me. What? What? Like in what condition is he? And I hate to bring back painful memories, but he is. Arun has become very powerful in the healing arts. If there's anything anybody can do. Emrun may be able to do it to reverse whatever ill effects have happened to him. I can't guarantee anything, but I know he would try for a council member of the city. I'm and sure that he would make an effort, and perhaps there will be time for that. For now, I think he simply needs space and to discover himself again. This is understandable. The state that I found him in was much worse. I'm glad to hear he's, re he's recovered so far. Yes. But you didn't come here to talk about my brother, did you? No. I was curious about him, but it was not the primary purpose of me coming here. I mainly wanted to ensure your safety. Oh, I'm... To make sure nothing had happened on the way back. I'm returned. There is much work to be done. She waves her hand towards the piles of paper on her desk and the different things that she's obviously been reading through. <laughs> Don't I know that feeling. Whenever I come back from an adventure, the library is in a similar state. Of I course. can certainly imagine that it is. We must go to Marius's rest again. Or Master Marius's blessing again. Oh, definitely. It's It's been too long since I saw the stars in that way. Mm -hmm. And seen the moons wash over me. Were you around when the shadows attacked the city? No, oh no, I heard of that. I returned not long after that, when the snows had finally fallen, when the waters had receded, although passing over the Bargeport Bridge, I saw something I'd never expected to see. What? The water flowing underneath it. Yes, I heard tells of that. Yes, well, it was much worse than a quain. The waters had receded by the time I had left, but... The reason I mentioned the shadows is because you mentioned Marius's blessing, Alistair said he was there, and he mentioned to me that he had seen shadows as one of his visions. I see. Similarly to how I'd seen fireballs coming down the city. Why can't the visions be nice for once? Do you ever wonder if you can believe them? I don't know. Alistair seemed to, seemed to have come true. Mine, not yet. Thankfully. Alistair says a lot of things. 
Not all of which are perhaps entirely the truth. Well, as a politician, I can't expect him to be truthful all the time, but the shadow... Excuse me? <laughs> as you realize you're speaking to one of the councilwomen? I'll just kind of, like, giggle. <laughs> My bad. I'm sure you didn't mean me. No. But, but I do understand that duplicitousness is sometimes part of the... Sometimes the part of the work of doing politics. Or not necessarily duplicity, but just sugarcoating some things and not others. There's a an I wish I had no, the, knock on the door. I wish I had the talent myself. The sharp rap that comes on the door. If you'll excuse me. She goes over the door and opens it slightly. Speaking in hushed tones. Turns back to you. Who was uh, it? You don't see. Oh. It's kind of she's blocking the door. If you will excuse me, I'm afraid my brother has taken a bit of a fit and needs some reassurance from a friendly face. I do apologize. It's been so good to see you again. You as well. I, and again, I need, need to ask to you to go. But I'll see you again soon. All right. And if you need help with anything, just let us know again. Of course. Or let me know first. And she kind of reaches out and she touches the side of your face gently. Do I feel it's any good to see you again. Effects? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's good to see you again. And she looks deeply into your eyes. Okay. I'll kind of like lean into her hand and look back into her eyes and it's like, you as well. Wink. <laughs> um, make an insight check. The blue dice rolled really well last time. Let's see if it rolls again this time. Twelve. Twelve? Okay. Um, the moment lingers for a second, and then you see her kind of sigh and smile. Trevor will show you out. And she opens the door, and Trevor's standing there. Until this way, time. sir. Yep, I'll follow Trevor out. Okay. Um, and you get outside the gate. Make a perception check. If you have anything that's hearing based, it will matter. How failed pointy ears? Doesn't give <laughs> you any extra di additional effects. Alright, blue dice was not as good this time. So, Halicon dice, come on. What was it? Perception? I'm pretty sure that's a plus two. So, 14. Yeah, 14. 14? Okay. Um, as you walk out from the front door, being escorted by Trevor to the gates, um, you hear a distinct shrill sound and wonder what kind of bird that was. And head out the front door. Okay. The rest of you are standing in front of the Temple of Demosne, I assume. And I yeah. hurry my ass up to the temple. We've had a bit of chatting amongst okay. ourselves. Nothing I'm here. leafing through the cooking book. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty sophisticated stuff. Mm -hmm. you, you need a lot of food, like I was making stuff and like bringing it to to Wellstone mm. or Waterstone at the time. Maybe I'll go work at the soup kitchen for a bit while I'm working on this. Anyways, that'd be between things. Okay. Okay, you're there. Um, uh, we, we basically talked about like stuff. Yeah. It posted for about like stuff we need. Clark's just asking, does Materials. the party need anything? He's okay. got a little bit of money. And he's happy to help supply the group. There's yet. this uh, wonderful shop around the corner, Shobies. Sure. That has everything you might need. All right. And you know, have a five, five finger discount. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Not to imply anything at all. Here's a question. Yes. Uh, does uh, is it known, generally speaking? The quantity of diamonds that are carried around by adventuring parties for reasons? I mean, diamonds are pretty, and they usually fetch a pretty good price. Yeah, but mages use them for things. And mages use them for a lot of things. Mages, yeah, I mean, it's it's known that um, they can have magical properties, or sure. they can be used in magic. What's a what's a diamond? Uh, uh, what's the word? Worth? No. Exchange. <laughs> Diamond exchange rate. What's the what's the commodity value unit of the diamonds that go to adventuring parties? Uh, generally, the assessment or the saying is done in gold pieces. So. How many though? Uh, it depends on the size of the diamond. So if you get a four hundred gold piece diamond, imagine it's probably worth four hundred gold pieces. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there's no separate. Scale Clark will for consult that. with his magical expert. <laughs> Experts. Mm. Yeah. Oh, fine. It wasn't even me. You, you weren't there. <laughs> yeah, you haven't arrived, so... They're, they're so spend two gold and get uh, two nice quivers full of arrows. Okay. Do you, like, just yep. randomly in the way, or, or...? Yeah, just on the way. We'll make sure it happens. I mean, I know a place, because I've bought arrows in Mature before. Yeah. And we actually did meet the uh, the gem uh, 
assayer uh, up at the Druid Moot. He lives in Pretoria. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't remember his name because he didn't seem important, so I lost him off my list. How many do you need? Oh, hundreds and hundreds of gold worth. <laughs> Clark, um, I'll drop a thousand gold and get as many diamonds as I buy. Okay. Wow. It's more of what sizes of diamonds do you buy? Because he has certain requirements. Um, yeah, for the the best resurrect I've got, it needs a 500 gold diamond. Everything else I've got just requires this many gold worth of diamonds, so the size doesn't matter. So one big or one and a dust. bunch of little ones, a thousand gold worth. Okay. Um, you've certainly cased a lot of the places that might actually sell and store He's these sort of things. He's looking to legitimately buy them. Yep. With a discount, if, a po if it's possible. Uh, how are you looking at getting a discount? <laughs> Can I get a discount? <laughs> <laughs> they actually um, wouldn't be intimidated by that because they hire really good people because they deal in gems. Um, he'll he'll uh... okay. He'll mention he's a, an agent working on behalf of the Kingfisher Delivery Service. Excuse me, the Messenger Service. Okay. And. Uh, and also in cooperation with a certain uh, member of the society named uh, Bozo. Okay. Um, now, would you like to roll a persuasion or an intimidation check? Hmm. Persuasion. Okay. Sure. He's not trying to start anything. I have to find this guy's name. Um. Six and five. I, I don't have his name actually. It's eleven. So twenty-one. Twenty-one. Yeah. Okay. Plus whatever bonuses names actually, give. Wait a second. Give you a five percent discount. Sure. So nine hundred and fifty gold for yeah. that. Nice. I'll add fifty to my pile. Torrance. I found yeah, this before me. Because he was the uncle of Helga. Oh yeah. Because I remember that fact. Mm -hmm. I have I don't have his name, but I have Helga, niece of Torrance. He's actually probably a bit distracted when you talk to him too, it's fine. Um, as he's still mourning Helga's death. Mm -hmm. Oh right, what happened? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sadly that spell would not have saved her. Uh, let's see if I can find. Yeah, um, buddy does thank you for the uh, for the exchange. Mm. Um, he um, produces the diamonds from a uh, rather ornate looking small chest. Okay. That's um, probably. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I do have it. It's, it literally only says bank question mark. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, thanks you for the the golden exchange, which all goes back into the same little chest. Does um, it have any particularly interesting markings on it? Um. That might apply to Clark's background. Is it one of those? Um. Not. Does it, does it have a die pack? It <laughs> does not have a die pack. Um, it does not have, actually, yeah, uh, because of, the, of your background, you do recognize uh, the sign of a large eclipse moon hmm. on the front of it, um, which is a very similar to the marking that you have on, on your chest as well. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Um, Clark will give him a friendly nod and walk out the door. All right. And then produce all these things. Um, to his fellows as they preach, as they approach the, <laughs> they the mezzanine temple, yes? I do suggest yep. going to see uh, Isaac Fletch, uh, the Fletcher, who works quick. Oh. Uh, well, you get two quivers of generic arrows. Yeah. yeah, he would have those on stuff. On Gen yeah. Gen Gen yeah. Oh, um, thank you. Um, I mean, you shouldn't have to do this just out of your own funds. They're You'll be spending them on me later, I'm sure. No, there's any possibility of that. So. Let's yeah. let's call it insurance. <laughs> sure. Where is he? My contacts seem to think that we're going to go on adventure real yes. soon, so we should probably be prepared for it. Yes. Am I here by now or no? Actually, there will be one more thing that you did notice. Okay. Um, is that when he took the uh, gems out, mm -hmm. he did not look at them in terms of a saying them, but he did have a set of really ornate scales. Okay. And he took your money on the one side, took them on the other, mm -hmm. and it weighed even. Huh. Even though the gold actually mm -hmm. looks like it's a lot larger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and be, again, because of your background in history, you do notice the, the, uh, the eclipsed moon on the top of the scales as well. 
All right, and you gather in front, distributing Christmas gifts, mm -hmm. uh, festin gifts, I guess. Um, and uh, uh, you hear, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, hello, how is it going? As you see Zinzalor standing on the top of the steps of the temple. Yeah, hello, Zinzalor. Oh, I'm Rune. It has been a while. How are you doing well? Oh, yes, I'm doing very well. Oh, how are you? Good, good. Oh, we're doing quite well, thank you. Is there something I can help you with today? None of you seem yes, injured. Uh, That's good. Oh, no. Um, however... Zacchaeus isn't there yet. No. Okay. okay. Uh, while we're waiting for Zacchaeus, I believe uh, his boss, Emeril, has uh, called us over to talk to him. Oh, well, you just missed him. Emeril went to his office about an hour ago. Oh. Well, Run around. thank you for letting us know. Oh, certainly. certainly. I'll show up at the... When do I show it up? It is our pleasure to know things. Um, Clark will pull Emmer inside if there's a moment. Sure. No. Yeah. And and perhaps uh, even Alzara as well. Step. <laughs> Considering that it's just us three. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, kind of. Yeah. Okay. We'll, just take, well, I'll just take one. He step just away. grabs us and like moves us <laughs> away from Zinzalor. Sure. Uh, I'm sure you're busy. Uh, oh yes. Have a good day. Uh, nice seeing you, Clark. Is yeah, it? Yeah. Sure. Yes. Sounds good. He seems generally affable. It's an elf, uh, half elf, or no? Zinzler is an elf, I believe. Well, it's hard to tell from this distance. That's right. <laughs> um, we're, we're not going and measuring his ears or anything. That's true. That's true. Um, well, he has a presentation so, of an elf. Uh, or, well, here I don't know. <laughs> I'm just I'm just spitballing here. Um, uh, I killed a shape changer mm -hmm. in this town over the winter which was just over a little while ago. Um, yeah, sorry about that. So is there a chance that, like, uh, our friend is in danger? Which friend? <laughs> well, there's three of us here. I assume there's at least one more. Uh, Zacchaeus? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I have other friends, too. Oh. Um, <laughs> you must be so fortunate. He's probably <laughs> fine. I don't know, I make lots of friends. Oh, yeah. Somehow. Um, the councilwoman is back. Oh, yeah, good. With her brother. Interesting. I thought he was dead. But he could Same. have just been under, I mean, we, uh, well, I've been in a jail cell to block magic, so maybe he was just being kept somewhere, but. Maybe. Hmm. I mean, I've been one, too. Mm-hmm. They well, suck. <laughs> um... Probably okay. I can send a message if you want. That would be good. Do you mind? Do it. Um, well, actually, I have a thing for this. Um, okay, I chant Paluxia. Please send my thoughts to Zacchaeus. And I'll cast a level 4 sending because I'm on a level 3. Okay. Shit. Um, Your head is invaded hey, by dirt. thoughts of Paluxia. Wait. Wait, where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> on my way. What's I, I, up? <laughs> uh, and then it stops because it's only two on minutes. my way. Got held up at the office. Oh, I would have added Emeralds at his office. For fuck's sake! <laughs> Heading um, back to the library. The library now. Okay. He'll meet us there. So, okay. so yeah. He just said I get held up the up at the office, and I'm heading back to the office. By the way. Makes sense. You That's get held up at the office. I was walking here, and then okay. It's like, so oh. just give me your like your full message, then I'll reply to the full message. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fine. I mean, that's, that's, that sounds that's about right. No, just kind of pointing uh, out that, that okay. you kind of realize that you yeah. Yes, I'm on my way. Zacchaeus isn't good at lying. <laughs> but do I have to make a deception roll through a cell? No, no, no. It's no. just that you said you're on your way. But why would you be leaving the library to be there if you're held up at your office at the library? Well, he might not have been held up till now. Yes. He might have been held up for a bit yeah. and then headed out. Yeah, and that's then he's on the way. All right. That's right. what everyone was arguing. So okay, so you're on your way to the library. You yeah. actually see them pass by the alleyways. You're running e to get back to the library. You at the gate. Mm -hmm. forwards. Okay, you see them as they pass by you going towards the uh, the library. You're a bit behind them. Okay, I'll follow them. Hey! <gasps> oh, no, sneak up on us and tap tap him on the shoulder. <laughs> hey! Yeah, you it's much better. <laughs> as you hear Zach is crying out from behind oh, you. Oh, hey. Hi. As opposed to at the library. Hey, Zach is. 
So I got held up at the office, and I was on my way back to the temple because that's where Emily normally or I usually is. And yeah. All of a sudden, he's not. If he bleeds, he's actually, gray, well, he's actually in his office. Him. Wow. Yeah, well, according to Zinsalor, yeah, Emerald left like 20 minutes ago. Okay, so we should go to his office. But I'm assuming you guys were already on, on the way to his office, so onwards. Okay. May I roll an insight? You certainly can. <laughs> <laughs> Would you care to defend with a deception roll? Total 20. 12. Yeah, something doesn't quite hold up in the story. The fact that he's coming from behind you and the library's in front of you. Um, You're probably pretty certain he's not a changeling, though. Well, yeah, no, one's, no one quite sounds like that. Um, <laughs> you, you realize you're lying, right? Huh? What are you talking about? Library is that way. Yeah. The bar is literally right here. You came from past the bar. Yes, because I was hurrying or to make the, it to the temple. The temple. I used the shortcut. That's why I ended up behind you. I, I, you I used a shortcut. Okay. You do know that he, know, he knows another shortcut out of the library that actually oh, yeah. opens up on the side towards the towards the temple. I saw you saying, a wizard did it. Yeah, exactly. Everyone just keeps going. <laughs> I mean, I, I also know he was lying. Yeah, you you have your suspicions. You, yeah. well, the sure fact that I was was. like, I know I shrunk up. Wink, wink, smirk, smirk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess I was, but shh. <laughs> You've got a twitch. <laughs> All that reading, you know, you like face that. first, like in books. <laughs> you, yeah. you should have that. I checked it. <laughs> Maybe uh, after the th- after after we speak to him, to I. Speaking of which. <clears throat> I have an idea that might help out Salazar. Hmm? Can we walk and talk? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm oh, assuming, yeah, I'm I'm ahead of you guys. Excellent. Yep. And you realize you say that to nobody and they all catch up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it shouldn't be too hard to make something he can wear that would give him his vision back. I'll have to think on it. And then he zones out as he walks towards the library as he's thinking. All right, you come around to the front of the library. Uh, The gates are closed for the day, because it was getting later on the day. Uh, But the guards guards recognize you. Um, (laughs) Do you use that tone? Open up the gates, please. (laughs) Okay. Please. There there seems to be an enormous amount of fussing with the uh, the, the, uh, fascination, they're fascinators on the the gate. But they do open it up after a couple of minutes. The guard's like, wow, he's in a good mood. Thank you. Um, They ask all of you to sign, uh, to come in, including yourself. And you have to vouch for them. Oh, do we have to do the hand pokey with the orb? Uh, uh, the orb wouldn't be out here. The right? orb is not out here, but they do ask for a uh, a small sample. Okay. Uh, from each of you. Clark will offer Clark. his own with his own knife. Okay. Wait, the, how do you the guard, a the guard kind of like sort of uh, looks at you with a with an appreciative grin, it's like, all right, tough guy, I like that. Um, uh, what kind of sample though? Can we just like? What? Spit. Sample. No, because they can't judge spit, but they can judge blood. Uh, I asked blood has been the only thing so far that has been a fairly good indicator. But have we tried spit? I have to make sure that <laughs> Adrian himself does mine, because he knows that mine reacts weird. Um, the blood does the not blood necessarily... It was just the orb, the orb does. does. Yeah. Oh, okay. But the blood yeah. does seem to have some... When you separate it away, it does seem to turn, start to turn gray. Not in your case, but that's the yeah. test that they use. Okay. That's the test that guards are applying. Okay. Um, and, oh, that? Uh, okay, so that's not the orb test. Okay, I guess. No, it's not the orb okay. test. They don't bring that to the front gate. Yeah. Um, but they, they have... stolen right quick. The, the idea is that they have had to institute some sort of reasonable measure, and this one seems reasonable enough, um, but they can't use the orb in all those cases. Um, okay. It's being... The other thing is, you, as you recall, the orb was the target of the uh, Queen of the Hunt's uh, travel mm-hmm. or a uh, raid on the library, so it's actually being locked up at the moment, okay. and only a couple of people have the key for that. I uh, sign with prestidigitation. I'll sign too. Because I've got uh, that for, back now for all of these people. Well, it doesn't actually. Uh, it yeah, it makes hour. a temporary mark. Yeah, yeah. they it ask you. They hour. ask you to use a pen. <laughs> you guys are no fun. Um, I sign with a pen. Liability. We're not. To, we're not to trust any sort of magical insignia. Uh, well, we've seen some things faked before. I cross out Donald Duck and write my name in. <laughs> Donald Trump. 
Um, as your hair instantly goes forward. No. Um, <laughs> you, uh, you, you travel into the library without escort. You can see now that Holmara's group has left already. So there's a lot less uh, noise from that particular section. Um, and you make your way back to where? Going directly Emerald's to office. Emerald's office? Yeah. Okay. Um, into Emerald's office, the uh, attendant is not there. It's late at night, but the door is slightly ajar. Go in. Okay. You see Emerald sitting behind his desk, um, going through a number of papers, poring over a couple of books that he's pulled down. Uh, he's changed the style of robe now so that it no longer, it, it basically conceals the fact that he's missing it, practically his entire left side at this point. Um, he looks weathered and worn, and you can detect even a bit more grayness around the temples, but otherwise the same emerald you had seen before, looking a bit stronger in, in his own way, so weathered but stronger. Yeah. Um, he gestures for each of you to sit down. I'm glad you came by. I was wondering message. when you might. I I'm have not late, been, I hope. Hmm? I'm not late, I hope. No, no, this is going to do. I hope all of you have had a decent few days. I was glad to see Salazar again. It's been a while. Yes. He's different. He is very different. It's like he's lost his magical, his magical abilities. I've had as much discussion with him and with Miyazana. Something has been lost, unfortunately, in his reincarnation, but... Can you get it back? Uh, it's beyond me. Miyazana's looking into it. But to be honest, I think that Salazar is happier this way. It's something new that he's never experienced, which is strange to me. And the amount of power, and he looks over this kind of missing arm, and vitality that I've already lost would never make me happier. Unless... Mind you, you can think straight. In my experiences with Salazar, it was the very gift of not thinking straight which made him unique among all the men I've ever met. Mm -hmm. uh, he was thinking straight as the universe, a universe that was twisted. <laughs> I've heard him say something similar. Perhaps it's rubbing off on you. <laughs> You're the second person to say that today. <laughs> Nonetheless, I have been going over my records, trying to revive what memories still live within me. Many things have been forgotten, some intentional. But I believe I have a location where I would like you to investigate. <coughs> one of the former libraries, one which had... I think been abandoned for at least eight centuries now. I do not know what to expect. I have not been back to the location for numerous reasons, not least of which, not least of which is one of the protections that we had left behind. There is a, a generator, if you will, of power in the area, a magical radiation, invisible, difficult to even detect with magical means but it has a suppression effect on a number of different things. You cannot scry into the area. You cannot teleport in or out of the area. It was meant to keep us a safe distance away from any of the concerns that might attack the library. Mm -hmm. In the end, in that particular place, it was one of the people inside who had been corrupted through the pressure on his family. Sad to say, his family suffered more than he did in the end, and the library was abandoned. Other things had moved into the area at the time. I do not know what remains of them. Most of those had been shades. Um, demons of lesser ilk that simply invaded the area. We left it as it was because it seemed as though they had no interest in whatever pieces and parts we'd left behind. The books that we know of had been removed. The radiation generation itself is still left in place. Seemed like a sufficient way to do it anyway. Now I come to think that that might be a useful thing to once again protect the library, now that it's lost some of its defenses in the attack from the hunt. So that would be one of the things I'd hope you would retrieve in the area. The hunt attacked multiple libraries at once? No, no, they attacked this library, yeah. and in doing yeah. so had disrupted two of the major enchantments I'd left behind mm. to protect it. It is somewhat more vulnerable now, and I am not yet powerful enough to re-enchant those things. So go get the item that is producing the circle of... It produces the effect that would hopefully uh, be beneficial here if tuned properly. 
I've already spoken to Gerber about using it, uh, about controlling it, but he has not yet built a device that can contain it properly. That will be part of the enchantment. But having such a thing would make it much easier for us to do it. Where I would like to send you, and I can send you to the general location. We did have a, a teleportation circle built outside of the, the domain of the radiation. Is what was called the Tower of Awaz, A H W A Z. If you want to write that down, um, <laughs> H W A Z. Yeah. It was in many ways a fine construction, a combination of elven brilliance and dwarven engineering, uh, with a few extra touches we added along the way. The tower itself rose almost two hundred feet into the air, stock straight with a beautiful glistening emerald cover. I'm afraid they probably will not find it in that state. I suspect you will find it destroyed or broken down. But deep below the tower should be where the artifact is. It will be nothing more than a small rock, probably, if no longer kept within its confines, uh, nothing more than a few, almost, eight to ten inches long. Enough that you could handle it by hand, but be careful in doing so. Do you have any sort of magical containment you might put it in, or it might be safe? I'm assuming putting it in a bag of, in a bag of holding is not going to be safe. A bag of holding might work. Mm. I suspect that the energy would in time corrupt the bag, but if it's not there for too long, it should be sufficient. Uh, we have multiples, so we can shift it between bags. Good, good. The residue in the area will probably continue on for some time, even after the rock is removed. Take care in that. This power, when we had it there before, was somewhat contained. Uncontained, it may have transformed the area. It may have also undermined any magical uh, conditions you might have. We do know that one person we had sent in there came out insane. That was several hundred years ago, and we've left it since. On which island is this spot, this tower of Haraz? Har I will consult my notes. At the mention of this, I pull out my uh, I break attunement to my bracer and start attuning to my ring of intellect. Or um, a ring that gives me advantage on wisdom saves. Okay. <laughs> Might be a useful thing. It is on the island of Taraka. T-A-R-A-C-A, if you happen to be writing it down. The island itself is barely habited. There are people along the coast. Most would not venture in further towards where the where the tower once stood. What's the, uh, well, what do I remember from that island? Have I read about it? Very little seems to be written about Taraka itself. Uh, make a history roll. 11 plus 9, I think. Not natural 20. Okay. Um, it is a port, and that is probably the only thing that's still written about it currently. Um, it does have port facilities. They do work on ships. But people tend not to wander inland. Uh, it's mostly, um, let's see, you haven't read anything contemporary about it. The only thing you've written, you've read, would be older. And most of the writing is it's a port, you can stop there, don't stay. Because there's very little of, of interest. Um, if you were to compare it in our world, um, there would be things like Tortuga which was not a, an island where people really stayed so much as an island of service to the sea. A pit stop. Kind of, yeah. But is it like a jungle island, tropical... Groups of oh yeah, it's definitely tropical. Okay. But it's further inland is where he would indicate. And he would show you a map of, of the area. The, um, the teleportation circle will take you to the edge of a large uh, bowl-like shape on the island. And from there, it is a straight, uh, well, if you walk straight, if the, provided the jungle hasn't grown up, uh, about a five-mile walk inward. From what we recall, the effects of the 
the artifact would be in the two mile range. But it's probably grown more erratic. Two miles from the artifact? Surrounding it, yes. So this artifact, it makes one insane if you're exposed to its uh, radiation. Its correct? power seems to be corruptive. So I would ask that you can if take protections, you should do so. Do you think uh, Miyazona would be willing to give us such protections? She may have a few things, I'm not sure. I guess that, must, that would be most helpful. Indeed. What I would ask from you is that when you go there, and I can... I know the circle, so I can send you there. You will be responsible for getting yourself back. I believe you have that gift. Um, Assuming I'm sane. Is to at least um, see what the area is like. Make an assessment. You may perhaps return at that point, or you can continue on if you feel you can take the necessary steps. So the main goal is make an assessment of the area. And I will if need we, to have If we artifact. think it's, uh, it's possible to get the artifact, get the artifact. I wish oh, to get the artifact, you, okay. but you will have to make the assessment whether you wish to return or go immediately. What does this artifact do? Uh, it generates the magical energy in a field. It blocks things, blocks scrying, teleport, that sort of thing. Yes, the energy has a disruption on magic in general. Right. It was dro- brought up from uh, a mine a thousand and five, I forget exactly how long, it must be two thousand years ago now that it was first discovered, uh, from a mine deep, deep underground, where there are a number of disruptive magics like that. The stone seemed to be a concentration of that ability. Doesn't, it resists most form of refinement, so we simply found a way to cage it. And that cage is presumably broken. Mm-hmm. We'll see what we can do. Um, so is everyone uh, interested in taking this job? Well, yeah. Sure. Sure, why not? Okay. Good. And, sir, you have uh, the services of... Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, right. Actually, just, uh, you, say, uh, you have the services of uh, the group we have formed. Ah, good, so good. I will, uh, I sadly do not have any uh, cards to pass out at the moment. Uh, that was That's an excellent idea of uh, the young dwarfs, but uh, um, now uh, we do need to talk about compensation. Course. I'll go gather my things. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that, of course, I mean, Zacchaeus is paid a wage for working for you anyways, but yes. uh, for the rest of us, this is a, a dangerous job we will need to prepare. Of course. Um, I have um, discretionary funds I can use. Um, while we do have a, a group from acquisitions already have left and have taken a certain amount of necessary traveling funds. I still have some money available. Upon return from the reconnoiter, if you wish to go and return then, I would be willing to pay you a small amount. I believe 250 apiece would be reasonable as for that. If you discover oh, more... Oh, just for the going there and back? Yes. Okay. But as for the retrieval of the... Yes. As for the retrieval of the item itself... I think I can see fit to pay your group 8,000. That sounds good. Now, there are also connections that I have that in lieu of funds, and I believe that I have that much at the moment, but in lieu of funds I can arrange other services or uh, make other arrangements if that suits you. Well, that uh, sounds good to me. Everyone else in agreement? Okay. Not here. I'm gathering my yeah. things again. Um, well, then... Uh, <laughs> You're actually getting my things. I suspect we should probably head out in the morning. Because we will want to, if it's a jungle, we'll want to do some uh, preparation of course. for that. And I know It that will be much warmer than here, and the humidity is quite high. 
There will be insects and other things, I suppose. Okay, well, then I guess we shall see you in the morning. When, precisely? I am unlimited time free from the restorative temple. Mm. Maybe mid-morning. We go out, get a few things, and then yeah. get there. Like tennis. Yeah. That should be fine. What I would suggest is then you find me at the temple, and I can okay. go out to transport you at that point. Sure. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Could this I will be important. Could I have a quick moment of your time? Certainly. Um, I'm sure you know your way around at this point. Sure. I would advise that you stay together. Hadrian's new protocols have made it important to make sure that we have a buddy system. <laughs> and there's Zach just walking out to his room. No, eavesdropping outside the door. Or outside the door, not eavesdropping. Just not wanting to be part of the awkward double payment conversation. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you for coming. And once they've left, what can I do for you, young lady? I have questions actually written down. <laughs> um, my mom is kind of hard to get a hold of. <laughs> she says I can, but like... Your mother has many things, and responding to... Responding to communication is not one of them. Exactly. She says I can, but like, I don't know where she is, so I can't. Um, but... But among the druids, I'm sure they can relay messages. Somehow. But you need to know where people are. From my experience with your mother, the one place she returns to frequently is the grove. The grove of the moons. Um, but something that the queen said. She said that we were kin. Has your mother told you much about the hunt? Nothing. I am not surprised. I can tell you what I know, which is second hand for the most part. Yes, I'm thinking of trying to make one of those too. Straight. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Uh, but then I suppose everything now is a long time ago to me, and even further for you. There were a number of families. The Druids were only flat families at that point. Since then, there has been more effort to reach out to people from the other islands wishing to take up the cause of the moons, to honor nature. But in the beginning, it was families, generations and generations of families. But there was a dispute. You, of all of the people that I could speak to, are probably more familiar with the moons than, than most. Most think of the moons only in terms of what they can see, the light that shed upon the earth, upon the ground, upon the world at night. But the dispute came upon the realization that all of the light of the moons is but one half of their existence. The other half comes from the darkness, the part of the moons that you cannot see or you choose not to. It was to this part that that who calls herself the queen of the hunt was attracted. Her name, if it means anything anymore, was Versatra, along with that which she chose as her king, Uvath. But they have left those mortal names behind centuries ago. There was a battle one that would rival even that which I participated in against Poluxia. 
In those days, even the Paluxians were drawn into this battle. And among the Druids, that's that faction, the circle of the water, scholars, scholars of the water, I think, they changed their name when they turned their back on many things. But the battle split families and Versatra, your aunt, chose the darkness. Slayer's hunch was correct. <laughs> she could not be defeated. The hunt grew in power, drew from both sides of the plains. There were a number of gates that were corrupted for that purpose. It was perhaps your mother's last act of mercy to banish them. She has perhaps begun to regret that decision. because it seems as though they have found a way free from their banishment, from the dark wilds. I don't know much more than that, really. I know that the hunt is dangerous, and I know that they seek more power here, ways to cement themselves and supplant your druids. If you have not heard from your mother in a while, there are two things which I would be worried about. One, that she is already fighting them directly and not winning. Or two, your aunt, Vasatra, was every bit as powerful and clever as your mother. And if she has found a way back from the banishment, that she may have realized a way to banish others. I hope that is not the case. Do you know why it would be connected to Arvax in any way? Why she would be looking for the Eye of Arvax? Hmm. Just for more power? Or... There are artifacts of power connected to both planes. They can be used to help bridge gates. And perhaps that is part of the bargain that she made to free herself from the banishment. Arvax is powerful. I faced it once before myself. I don't know if he's connected to the, the ones who took my arm. But I suspect it is a, an allegiance of convenience. Arvax was among those who tried to use Poluxia to his own ends. And in her corruption, he nearly made his stay on this world. Those gates that were created. Poluxia was so mistaken. What do you know of your friend? I know he means well. Um, Watch him. I've been watching him since he was two. <laughs> I, I know he means well, but... If there is a good side of Paluxia, I hope that he has found it. The six sisters all failed in their own ways. 
for all fell in their own ways. And others used the power that the Luxi had brought for their own ends. In a way, it is a tragedy. I never faced the goddess herself. But as the story goes, it was love that destroyed her. It was love that corrupted her. It was love that fooled her. I hope her return does not prove equally foolhardy. And either she has learned or that which was fooled was destroyed. One last thing. Who's older? You are mommy. <laughs> 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 it is difficult to determine age. I have spent so many years in the outer wilds and the other plains. Centuries, it feels like. But when I return here, nothing more than months have passed. I fear that my age is catching up to me. Whereas I suspect your mother is somewhat still vibrant. Because she says that she wasn't there when Palaxio went down. No. She was a child. But she has aged much since. How old are you? 118. She was older than you are now, at that point. I suppose that makes me older. I'm not sure it makes me wiser. If you have one more question, I might be able to stand it, but I admit that I grow weak. I must return to the temple soon. That, that's all I had to ask. Would you accompany me? Sure. I would appreciate it. And he stands up and kind of closes one of the books he was working on. And you can see him kind of struggling to get to his feet a bit. Um, and as he kind of moves around, uh, ushering you out before, uh, he waves his hand in front of the door and you see the door seal mm -hmm. with no, no crack whatsoever behind you as runes kind of fade out from the energy he expended. Um, and then he leans on you heavily to make it outward towards the door. Yeah. Um, it takes longer than it would if you were just walking by yourself, obviously. Um, and you can feel him, although he still stands taller than you, you can feel him lighter than you expected and growing more and more difficult with each step. Zinzalor is there to meet you and kind of helps usher him in as well, um, nodding his thanks to you. Come in on, come on in, old friend. I'll take care of you. Thank you, Elzara. Thank you again. Yes. Almost a whisper at that point. I'll see you tomorrow. Bright and early. And I go check if there's a room in the elegant pony. Okay. They do have one room left. Some group came in and took most of the rooms recently. <laughs> but they do have one, the smaller room they keep under the stairs. I've slept in the room under the stairs before. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, but yes, you find yourself a place to stay. Ah, oh, nook, sweet nook. <laughs> <laughs> now, what I would suggest um, is, well, it's 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So likely what's, we're not going to get a chance to really get into too much more, but what I would suggest if you do want to discuss a little bit about your strategy or a little bit about the, the stuff you want to take with you, what I'm going to suggest slightly is that you might want to take, say, another party with you, because there are a few, uh, few people in town that you trust, one that has great business cards which you find in your pocket uh, about uh, being ready for hire. Mm -hmm. um, so that we're ready next week to introduce Shank back to this particular team. What happened to Jack? Is he still... Jack has not returned. Um, in fact, nobody seems to have any rumors about him. Actually, Clark might have a rumor or two about him. Uh, why don't you make a... Uh, sure. Let me see. Let's make this... There was no Streetwise rolling. Where is there? No. I keep remembering things from other systems, which is hilarious. 
Uh, let's make it a survival roll. Sure. This is another one you can think of. Let's see the degree to which. Uh, I'm unskilled and I rolled a one. Okay. So no. No, you didn't. You only met Jack briefly, and after the trial, which he literally kind of smoke bombed and walked out of, nobody's heard, heard anything about him. You've heard rumors of different people doing different things, but nobody's ever used the, word, the name Jack. I'll answer no. All right. So, assuming you guys are in the same place, you can discuss whatever additional things you want to bring with you. I can Make your plans. Jack. You can, if you want to. Should I? It's up to you. I mean, I think he's probably, I don't think he could come with us. He's probably st uh, stuck doing what he's doing right now, but... Uh, Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you want to talk to him, go ahead. But if he can't accompany us, then he's going to uh, Yeah. I mean, last we'd heard, I think he was he had his group of misfits okay. that he was taking care of. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I will not do ascending. And this Shank Paul was outside the city. Yep. Uh, Paul has continued to do hunting outside the city. Uh, Milda just left with the acquisitions. Okay. Um, it would also give me an idea of which NPC I should, NPCs I should update if they're going to be coming with you. Mm. I, I, mean, mean, I, I would definitely approach Paul. He was it's more mouths to feed. Yeah, I mean, like Paul's outside of what? Wellstone or Waterstone? No, he's outside of a tour. In the woods? Okay. I thought he was outside of a smaller town. No, he was doing the hunting uh, outside of a tour when he was attacked by mm -hmm. the uh, by the hunt, and he was in Waterstone recovering, but that was a, a month or a month ago, or two months ago, I think now. Yeah, I mean, there's Paul, there's uh, Captain Draven. Um, the there is a sense of keeping it somewhat small, just because um, it is a bit secret what you're doing. Yeah. Because um, there's also concern that if uh, something that would have been communicated, I guess I didn't quite say it explicitly, but there is concern, it probably would have said it to you because you were talking more about the Queen. Yeah. The Queen is still in search of powerful artifacts. And if she were to get a hold of this, it would be very, very bad. Yeah. And she does seem to have spies. Yeah. Um, so it would be people you can trust in a smaller number. I, I definitely would trust those two because we've fought with them before. Mm -hmm. Um, and the captain helped us fight our backs. Yeah. Um, and Paul, Paul. Yeah, I mean, given that he's a captain, they might want him around, but I mean, yeah. he's, the, he's the only other one we know that... Uh, yeah, those, those are the two, because Milda's gone and Jack's gone. Yeah. Um, maybe the Ram, but... Argon. Argon. Um, um. Flint. Would be a possibility. Flint and Gart. Uh, and of course, Shank, because he'll be around. <laughs> um, also, Shank did impress a lot of people by taking mm -hmm. the stand against the snowman. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's any other. town people. Those, those would be the ones that we've fought with um, that I would trust to a certain degree. You could take one of your disciples if you wanted to, but you know that most of them are untrained at the moment. Yeah, it's a little dangerous. I'd rather leave this them is here. <laughs> one of the few people you know who is much more trained than others is Iroh. Yeah, but she's... Here specifically for learning rather than mm -hmm. going out and doing dangerous things with me. So um, I'll bring it up to her in case she wants to just stay out of town for a couple of days. But uh, um, it, it it would help keep her brain in. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I don't like want to put it that way, but uh, there's Christoph Mueller and his people. Yep, you know that Christoph is still kicking around town. Christoph, uh, Rita, and, and Turk. Uh, they come as a package deal. Mm -hmm. I, I would say, like, we're getting kind of big here. <laughs> yeah, what I'm going to say is probably Cards limited to no more than, than one or mm -hmm. two NPCs, because uh, we're yep. all going to have five PCs, so... 
Yeah. And then keeping in mind, you're not getting paid anything more. Mm-hmm. Um, Too if, many uh, mouths to feed. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, right now on the table is 9,000 gold. Mm-hmm. For completion of mission. Um, it sounds really good four ways. Mm-hmm. Maybe five. Well, yeah. Five with the group. But, uh, well, I mean, like send the charter, other people come with us, they get paid a good rate, but that's it. And mm. the good rate is two to three gold per day. Which is not worth dying over. Well, that's more than what soldiers get paid. Careful. We're just at the rich end. <laughs> um, I'm stay there. You do get a sense that with the amount of money he's offering, there is expected, if there is danger, it's going to be dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that you're going into the magical radiation could be really dangerous. I would... Uh, I mean, it probably would be a good idea to stick to mostly library people. Um... And I can ask Iroh just because it helps me keep her from murdering people in the city. Um, but actually, I, having Iroh with us, more like out of game, would be interesting. Mm. Uh, I mean, I'll invite her. I'll make it clear that I mean it could end up being a dangerous situation, and mm -hmm. she does. I, I'm not making it an obligation or anything. Just if she wants to get out of the city for a couple of days. This would be a thing. It is going to be a jungle, so it's not exactly like the place she was at before. Mm -hmm. um, first, the, one of the first responses would be, "I fear no danger," which, so far, as you yeah. know, it's true. Um, she is curious. She's never like this is the first time she's ever left Bendra, let alone going onto an actual island. Um, yeah. So she would be interested. Sure, I say, uh, and getting away for a few days would be nice. Yep. Yeah. Um, also, so for, also for a tour. <laughs> hmm. It'd be nice for a tour. Oh. Sure. <laughs> she got away for. I, I would say Possibly. her, the captain, and Paul would be yeah. about. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Because two of them work for the library. One of them's on your shoulders. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So if you had to narrow it down to two... Mm, Paul over the captain, I would say, because we've traveled with him more. Sure. I like the captain more. Paul's expendable. <laughs> okay. If there's uh, a chance of people going insane, I'd rather not have Paul right next to me. <laughs> Just saying. Eh. He makes a good point. Paul's more handleable. Although I guess he's going to be in the front lines and not near me. I might side for a well, plus, uh... Yeah, I mean, berserkers are not easy to influence that way. Um, so yeah, Paul and Iroh, great, we're going to be the charisma party. I mean, we already so much are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you had the option of taking Flint uh, with you, who's definitely much more charisma-based. Yeah. And Draven, Draven was actually fairly uh, charismatic as mm -hmm. well. Um, yeah. But... Uh, and I, I, I admit it's a little bit gamey, but to keep it in a reasonable number so that it's not mm -hmm. swamping me uh, as well. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I think we should keep it to just library people because it's the library hiring us to do this, and they want to keep it yeah. quiet. So. Yeah. Also, you know, it's, the, it's the Owens show. Let's, let's be honest. <laughs> so, so, it's the Owens show. We don't uh, want to be upstaged yes. by some Goliath. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you you you're pretty sure that Paul won't say much because Paul never says much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and Iro, yeah, the, the it's mutual between her and the city about getting a few days. Yeah. Okay. So and Shank, because Shank. And then Shank. Well, <laughs> Shank is a PC, so yeah. Shank, Shank gets in. Um, all right. Well, I think we're gonna call it, call it uh, to, to close. It's just after yeah. seven. It's a little bit I'll early. I'll think about session. what we might have for extra preparations for mm -hmm. the jungle, but. Keep in mind, you can't be prepared for every situation, but mm -hmm. uh, reasonable preparations. I mean, yeah. I grabbed all of my clothing uh, from my cabin, so I have my summer um, clothes. Did he tell us how far it was from the, or used to be from the teleport circle to the library? About library. six miles. Okay. Um, Even in jungle, that shouldn't take us more than like half a day. Six miles, that's like an hour. Um, well, not through, by normal through thick jungle. Well, uh, right, in real yeah. life. I've been in a rain. In, in real life, it takes it's a not, long it's time. Not. I sprint. 
Uh, it takes me more than an hour to go six miles. I don't know about you. I'm a normal person. Anyway, we'll bring it to close there. Thank you for spending your time with us and watching. Uh, it's been a different kind of session. Uh, I, I will admit that I perhaps almost made another downtime session with this <laughs> individual Adam's person, home. but what's that? Adam's home. Oh, well, there you go. So we'll have Adam with us next week to uh, to round out the crew. Shank will return once more as you head in towards the Tower of Awaz and find out exactly what's up with that. So with that, uh, I will bring the show to a close. Say goodnight, everybody. Good night. Good night.